What's up, beautiful people, and welcome to another episode of Don't Keep Up With, Don't Keep, Don't Keep Up With The Joneses. Don't, don't keep up with the, don't keep up with the Joneses. Don't keep up with, don't keep, don't keep up with the Joneses. Don't, don't keep up with the, don't keep up with the Joneses. What's up, beautiful people, to another episode of the Jones Family Channel. It's me, Ricky Jones Jr., and as you can see, I am not by myself today. I have an exciting guest, right, that I'm excited to dive into this conversation with and hear his insights on South Africa in general, but then even, too, to speak to what it's like knowing and recognizing that people are moving, desiring to move here from all around the world, but then as well, he has something that even, at, well, I won't say even, and everyone, everyone could find themselves learning from, which we're gonna talk about it. So make sure y'all stay to the end for that. However, before we get there, let's welcome our guest today, Mr. John. Mr. John, how are you doing today? Uh, great, thanks. That's um, good. I, I, I always um, think it's uh, important to, to you know, get some background. Yes. So, so your audience know mm -hmm. your background. Yeah. So uh, I wonder if I can get mine. Of course. No, yeah. that was that was definitely going to be the segue. So you're oh, doing right, it very right. well. No, you're right. good. Okay, you're cool. good. No, so I just thought, let's get the introductions out the yeah. way. Yeah. So, um, so the last 10 years I've worked in government. Okay. Um, uh, under the, the National Government ANC. Okay. Um, was with Department of Justice and then prior to that Department of Education. Mm -hmm. um, so I think I've got quite a good insight into how this place actually runs. A lot yes. of people listen to propaganda on the TV and just follow it, hook, line and sink in. Mm -hmm. They never really have the full picture and I think it's nice to work internally and get that picture. Mm -hmm. So that's the sort of work background. Prior to that I was a techie at University of the Vitvalvis Rund, okay. uh, IT. Okay. So my main sort of work is, is IT. But uh, my studies are actually philosophy, so, mm. so I'm actually, I've actually got a philosophy doctorate. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so not on IT. And, and people say, well, what's, what's that got in common? And the answer is logic. Okay. Computers and IT are both about logic. Wow. But, um, yeah, that's, that's me. Yeah. You, you told me about yourself. You said project management and, yes. and coaching. And yeah. Yeah, those are the different things that we do as well. Of course, YouTube is one of those things. Yeah. Man, that I love people. I love talking to people. That's one of my yeah. desires each and every day to see who I can talk to today. Yeah. But then as well, outside of the talking and meeting with people, learning from people, because I recognize that we're all different. We all are unique yeah. and we all have something to bring to the table, yeah. whether it's from our history or whether it's from the way we want to shape the future. Yeah. And so even with that being the case, I know as well as we talk prior to the cameras being on you're yeah. from South Africa yeah. right yeah. and so where in South Africa where are you born and were you uh, brought up uh, Johannesburg my whole life okay yeah okay um, I have visited other cities like on holiday yes uh, I spent a year in the UK in okay. Edinburgh uh, which is kind of like a Harry Potter theme set. It's, oh, really? Yeah. Have you ever been to Edinburgh? No. Beautiful, beautiful city. Yes. Even really small. Okay. We, we, we would call it more like a suburb. Yes. It's probably, I think it's about, it's about three by two miles in size. That's it. That's it. Okay. It's really, really small. Okay. Whereas Gauteng in Johannesburg area is about 100 k's by 100 k's. So we're yep. saying miles, about 70 by 70, mm. 60 by 60, something mm -hmm, like that. Mm -hmm. So this metropole that we're in here is kind of New York, London size. Yes. Not, yeah, right. So in, in room is cute. It was, okay. It was pretty. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, even um, downstairs, we were talking, and so of course, excuse my lack of knowledge of uh, being able to even ask this question. However, you know, being from America, we understand that there's different groups of people here sure. in South Africa, right? And so I would see you, and the thought would be that you're Afrikaans. However, in talking to you and asking you whether or not that was the case, you had a response. So what's your response if I was to ask that? So, so I've never liked putting myself in a particular group. Okay. Uh, there, there is a cliche in South Africa we call the rainbow nation or rainbowism. Yes. Yes. Uh, and, and rainbowism is kind, kind, of a, kind of a liberal take on South Africa okay. because it fails to recognize that there are problems. Okay. It's like, yay, everything's fine. Okay. You know, rainbow. Okay. Uh, and, and the original reference is Tutu, I think, in his, in his speech once Mandela mm. was released. Mm. Said something about the rainbow nation. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's referring to the different colors. Yes. 
Um, but within those those groups, there's there's different nationalities, for want of a better phrase. Um, mm. The friend we were talking to just now, uh, sorry, that's a South Africanism. The friend okay. we were talking to recently, okay, okay, uh, okay, said something about he didn't like the word tribes. I agree with him on that. Yes, yes, yes. So I said maybe clans, and then he said maybe ethnic groups, and I don't mm. like ethnic either because it implies. Okay non-European. Okay. Like we don't talk about Europe having ethnic groups, okay. really. Uh, so, so I don't like any of those terms. Okay. But that being said, I would, I would maybe say linguistic groups mm. is, is probably an easier way to demarcate. But even then, that's not quite accurate, right? Because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. if you look at, say, Trevor Noah, our famous comedian who took over from Jon Stewart mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, on The Daily Show. Yep. <laughs> uh, so Trevor... He, calls himself a coloured, which is yes. offensive to in most people in the States and, and the UK and places like that, whereas here it was just a classification, it mm. just means you have mixed heritage. Uh, so I've just got a kind of a mixed EU kind of background, yes. but I was born here, my parents were born here, their mm. parents were mostly born here, except for one of them who, yeah, one of them emigrated here. Mm-hmm. So I'm like fourth generation or third generation, okay. something like that. Okay, okay. Um, but a mixture, Afrikaans, English. Yes. My first language is English. Okay, okay. Nice, nice. And so even now, even as you talked about yourself, I didn't even recognize that, you know, you have the PhD in philosophy. So where did you get that PhD? So, so that's actually the reason I was in Edinburgh was to start there because okay. my grandfather got his doctorate from Edinburgh. Okay. Um, but uh, there was that economic crash in 2008, 2009, yes. so we came back here. Mm-hmm. And um, I took it to Cape Town instead because I'd, I'd got all my other degrees from Wits University, oh, University nice. of the Wittwaldsrand. Yes. Have you unpacked that word for your viewers yet? No, no, okay, I mean, so, you so, definitely can. So currently, currently the cities of Pretoria and Johannesburg uh, occupy a province called Gauteng, which is suited for gold. Mm-hmm. The place of gold, mm-hmm. uh, and previously that area was called Pretoria Vatvatosrand. Okay. And Vatvatosrand is an Afrikaans word meaning white waters ridge. Mm. Vit is white, vata is water, and, and runt is ridge or edge. Uh, and it refers to the hills that bear the gold in the south. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so Vits University was established like about a hundred years ago, mm. more than a hundred years ago, mm. uh, as a mining college. Okay. Okay. And then gradually. It brought other subjects online. So it's actually one of the oldest universities in the country, apart in from Cape Town, and I think possibly Grahamstown. Okay. Um, AKA Makanda, if you want to use the proper name. Okay, uh, okay. Grahamstown's a, another colonial reference. Mm. Um, but Wits uh, is an important university in the city because it was okay. the scene of many protests uh, during apartheid. Mm. Even when I was at university, there were anti-apartheid protests, mm-hmm. uh, which was quite recent, just before Mandela was released, mm. uh, or around the time he was released. Mm-hmm. Um, so for me, that symbolizes, at least in this country, the struggle against apartheid. So, okay. so most of my degrees are from Vits. Wow. Um, okay. It's only the doctorate that I got from Cape Town. Wow. And then it's just for variety, just so you don't only have Vits, otherwise yes. it looks a bit inbred. Right, 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 yeah. right, right. I like that inbred. I didn't heard that term before, but I even heard this is a difficult school to get into. So it's to quite say tough, that yeah. you have yeah. multiple degrees from there says a lot about you. Yeah, I think I think they require something like mostly Bs mm-hmm. in your in your uh, okay. grade twelve okay. Like, results. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. So Sorry. like a three point yeah, maybe okay. yeah, three point five even. Oh, it's quite high. Yeah. So higher yeah. than straight Bs. Yeah. Okay, I was about to say I was almost in there, yeah. but then three point five. Yeah, but it you depends know. on the topic as well, right? So okay. for medicine, that would require much higher. For humanities, that would require a bit lower. Mm. Might require like a two point five or three. Mm, okay. So something like that. Okay. Okay. Will be the difference. Okay. Yeah. Now that's fun. And so even to your point of the fact that Vitz had was not the epicenter, but there were different acts of anti-apartheid mm. type movements and things like that taking place there. Mm. And even prior to the live, if you will, conversation, you talked about you even doing some things that were against the grain. Yeah. And so do you think being at Vitz kind of introduced you to that or what no, was in you to was, say? No, there was a very interesting, so the apartheid system, apart from being barbaric towards the majority, um, 
was particularly unpleasant to live under if you didn't okay. toe the line. Okay. Um, so, you know, I don't want to go into all the details because yes, I, I don't feel like this talk should be about me. It should yes. be about welcoming mm -hmm. African Americans mm -hmm. to, to the motherland. Um, excuse me. The um, apartheid system, they you, you used to give white people privilege, obviously. Right, right. Uh, so it would ensure they went to the best schools, that they mm -hmm. had good public hospitals and so on. Mm -hmm. And it's only since the fall of apartheid that we've moved towards private schools, private hospitals and so okay. on. Uh, and that's because the national government has not got to spread the budget across all the people, not just mm -hmm. this tiny segment. Yes. But during that time, it, it was a pretty unpleasant scenario. It was, I, I wouldn't say it was quite Nazism, but it mm. was pretty damn close. Okay. Um, so we would have to go on training camps uh, out into the bush, as I mentioned, or what we call the felt, mm. which is an Afrikaans word cognate with English word field. Okay. Uh, it means the long grass, the savannah. Or prairie, okay. Americanish. Okay. Uh, and learn to survive. Mm. Uh, and they do stuff like make you salute the flag, make you sing the anthem mm. every morning, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, they'd make you wear khaki clothes, khaki, I think the Americans tend yes. to say. Yes, yeah. Uh, so it was very militarized. Um, and they would train you on this, this belief that black people represented danger, mm. which is called the Swat Khafar. Okay. Meaning black danger. Mm. Swart is cognate with the English word swarthy, mm -hmm. meaning dark. Mm -hmm. uh, and throughout, I would say starting in around 13 when I went to high school. Okay. We did a lot of these, um, these military exercises. So once a week we'd have what was called cadets, which was military training. Mm. Basically, mostly marching up and down, but sometimes shooting practice as well. Okay. Uh, I'd try to get out of it. Oh. Um, so I'd deliberately screw up the marching. And then, okay. unfortunately, I'd get beaten up for doing that. Mm. Um, and then we'd do shooting, and again, I'd, I'd mess it up like I'd aim for the instructor. <laughs> and huh. shoot like next to him, so he'd say, get off and get out of here. For sure. Because he doesn't want this, this person who's going to cause an accident anywhere near. Of course. There's only two two rifles, so not like really dangerous. Oh, okay. But, but it's enough. It's enough. It's enough to know you so were So they were like, get out of there. Right, right. So they only had to have annoyance. Okay. Um, but yeah, like, so with the military exercises, I think I was assaulted about two or three times mm. for not complying. Okay. So I started to skip those classes. Okay. Like I just wouldn't show up. And because it was mass numbers, it was like the whole school or just mm. like a certain grade, so it'd be mm. like a couple hundred kids, uh, you would tend to not uh, be that noticeable if you were missing. Okay, right. And fortunately, we had a couple of teachers uh, who are named because they deserve to be named. Mm. Uh, one guy was called Neil Mitchell, he was an ANC member. Mm. Uh, another guy was called Peter Seneca, mm. and another guy was called John Broderick, and those okay. three were my English teachers okay. over the years. And each of them was radicalized in some way. Mm. Uh, one was an anarchist, one was just a real philosopher, one was an ANSI member. And unfortunately, one of them's passed away in a motor accident, mm. but the other two are still around. And uh, they made it very clear how wrong it was. Mm. Uh, so for example, Mitchell had up in his classroom pictures of people dying with the word why underneath, like yeah, yeah, pro anti-war propaganda okay. posters. He had posters up in his classroom that gave stats of how much war cost versus wow. how much it would cost to feed people. Wow. Uh, so we were made aware of these problems. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, because the school had a, a sort of a British tradition which had a certain liberal slant to it, even though we did do the military exercises, he was tolerated. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't told to take that stuff down. Okay. Um, but the, the school inspectors were never really happy with him because mm -hmm. they were the sort of they were from Pretoria, which was the apartheid state. Okay. Uh, and they would bully people, basically. Mm, mm. Um, I was threatened with expulsion a couple of times for, okay. for not complying. Okay. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Not It wasn't nice. Right, right. No, it definitely doesn't seem like no, it. You had, to, you had to keep quiet. Okay. If you said something, you would get a hard time. So mm. one of the professors, uh, I forget his name now because I'm getting demented. Okay, okay, uh, okay. I'm old. <laughs> uh, one of the professors, what was his name? Advitz, when I was there, he, he was actually assassinated by the apartheid state here. Yeah. Okay, okay, so um, it was that serious? 
Yeah. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah. In fact, I was at a funeral for my my partner's uncle recently, mm. and some of the people speaking at the the funeral, ministers and such. One of the people was a, a priest who received a letter bomb, mm. and it blown both his hands off. He had two Captain Hook hands. Wow. Yeah. So the apartheid state was not to be trifled with. They were okay. violent, violent people. Okay. Okay. Um, and there's a lot of parallels that we see. Mm. Um, with as, the states. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned, you know, in, during apartheid, we had the thing called the Bantustan system, mm -hmm. which uh, so called tribes or ethnicities would be corralled off into their area. Mm -hmm. So, Matswana would go into the Botswana mm -hmm. enclave. So, similar to the Native American uh, reservations. Yes. Thing. And, and in Botswana, we put up a casino, yep. same as we hear about the Native American reservations Correct. here. Correct. Correct. So that was uh, that was called Sun City. So if you ever go to Sun City, that was uh, one of those casinos. Oh, yeah. which we do plan on going out yeah, there. It's, it's spectacular. Right, I heard it's beautiful, yeah. and then there's also different um, safaris or such mm -hmm. that you can go mm -hmm. out to and visit as well. Funny, the guy that created that thing, the guy called Sol Kersner, actually ended up owning the London Dome. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, he made wow. quite a lot of money off that. Quite a lot, to yeah. say the least, if he definitely had And both. there were quite a lot of shows that came through. Queen, for example, the British band, yes. uh, came through during apartheid, even though there was an okay. embargo. Because like with the Gaza and Israel uh, situation, mm -hmm, where they mm -hmm. say, no, Gaza is a separate country, mm. uh, we did the same thing here with the so-called homelands. Mm -hmm. We'd say, no, 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 um, but put it one as its own country. Mm. And that's why they could come and visit there, because it technically, theoretically, supposedly wasn't the apartheid state, but it kind of was. Okay, okay. So there's a lot of history. It's more like an occupied territory, much like okay. other places we won't, we won't name. Too. Gotcha, gotcha. No, I like that, in a sense of you having the history, right, having lived it, but then, of course, actually studying it and being a part of it in various ways, you've had the experience to see but then as well see what it was then, but mm. see where it is now. Mm. And so even with what it is now, of course, myself and my family moving over from the States mm. and obviously, I won't say obviously because maybe it's not known, but us not having all of that information. We see high level type information yeah. and we've been to the museums and things like that. And we've had conversations with people to, you know, hear what it was like yeah. however, having the experiences themselves obviously speaks volumes more yeah. so than information ever could. However, now seeing that Americans and other people from around the world are looking to move here, yeah. like what thought comes to mind as you see this taking place? What fault? Thoughts. Thoughts. Oh, yes, sorry. sir. Um, I think the most important thing to do is to realize it's a different country. Okay. And that there's nuances oh, that's that, nice. that aren't quite... Uh, overt and obvious. Mm -hmm. um, so, you, you, for example, I saw one video of yours where you were talking about your kids schooling. Yes. You don't have to name the school because mm -hmm. that's not safe for right. your kids. Right. Uh, but my guess is if it's anywhere around here, it's mm -hmm. what we call a Model C or private school. Okay. Which it is a private school okay. that they go to. So, just to expand on what I mean by Model C, so in 1989, I believe it was, okay. uh, we, we, the government realized that apartheid was failing. Mm. And they said, um, your school could elect Model A, B, C. I can't remember what the models offered. But Model C was something like self-governing, plus you allow non-white kids into the school. Mm. Um, and, I, and I hate the term non-white as well, because it implies that everybody else is just a big bucket. Yes, yes. Right, yeah. which is a terrible implication. Yes, sir. But the point is, um, they, 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 they started to allow it. Yes. Uh, but by the time I was leaving school, they, mm. they hadn't quite implemented anything yet. So mm. we were nominally Model C. Okay. So nothing really happened. So now there's a kind of a joke term, Model C, which means a person who's gone to a formerly white school mm. and now speaks with this, this accent. Okay. And, you know, it doesn't, you know, sound rural. Yes. So, so it's oh. become almost like a slight jibe. Yeah. Like you're a Model C. Oh, that's interesting. Um, and it's interesting because in the States, yeah. there are similar type, I won't say um, jokes, yeah. but 
the awareness of the way you talk and how you present yourself yeah. Yeah. is probably indicative of the type of school that you yeah. went to and the area that you lived in yep. and so forth and so on. So to know that there is a form of that even here yeah. is quite interesting. Well, if you think about it, South Africa is actually quite a big country if you compare to, say, Zim. Very much so. Yeah, no, Zim, 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 Zim geographically, Zim is maybe half the size, but the population is mm -hmm. way less. Okay. Uh, they're like 2 million or something small, I can't wow. remember the figure, oh, yes, whereas yes. we're 60. Okay. So we're, our population's almost the size of Germany or UK or France mm -hmm. or something like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, geographically we're bigger, so we're not as dense. Yes. But what's interesting with the, the sort of, you were talking about accents, I, I was friends with somebody uh, many years ago mm -hmm. who did their masters in linguistics and there their topic was on how accent designates class. And in fact, if you, if you look at my, my tour guide book, you'll see mm -hmm. that I talk about this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, basically, we signify our group by our accent. Wow. Yeah. So, so from my accent, you can tell I grew up in the center of Joburg. Wow. Uh, if I sound like Leonardo DiCaprio in Blood Diamond, uh -huh. that means I grew up in the south of Joburg. Really? That's South Joburg accent that he's yes. doing. It's not specifically South African. So if I hear somebody speak, I can say more or less what city they're from. Uh, that's, how, that's how precise our accents are. Wow. No, that's so true. Yeah. Because even as you're saying that, I'm thinking of even like in the States, how you can have a southern accent mm -hmm. or northern accent or Midwest yeah. or California slang, yeah. right? And Florida as well. Like yeah. they have their own. So even though the United States is definitely bigger and larger than yeah. South Africa, however, their similarities, even in the speech yeah. and vernacular. So my understanding is in the States, uh, Bostonians don't say their final R, so they'll say car instead of mm -hmm. car. Yes, 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 so, yes. So it's that kind of thing. Correct. So, so we've got something similar here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what's quite interesting, though, is that our youth, and, and when I say our youth, I don't mean of, of specific colors, I mean all of them, actually. Yes are so heavily influenced by American media now, I've noticed they've started to bring the R back in. Okay. Because our default accent was British Empire. Yes. We were only released from the British in 1961, I think. Okay, okay. Uh, so we, we were British a uh, British colony for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and when you hear a South African talk, uh, certainly Central Joburg accent or Cape Town, Rondebosch kind of accent, um, you'd think it was a slight variance on British. Mm. Um, we, we tend to flatten certain sounds, so we say ha instead of hi. Okay. How's it? Okay, instead okay. Of, How yep. is it? Yep, yep. Yeah? I've heard that. Yeah, how's it, eh? Yes, yeah, yeah, That's yeah. That's a very Afrikaans kind of influence on there. Okay. Um, but apart from that, we, we try to be British in the way we talk, and I've noticed some of the kids are now saying the R's again mm. from the Americans. So they mm -hmm. say, where's the car? And I'm mm -hmm. like, why? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Take a seat, right over there. <laughs> right, right. Oh, that's fun. That's fun. So even now, you're starting even talking about influence, right? right? You, influence you, of the states. You have no idea how too. huge the American influence is. Okay. Let's let's play a little game. Okay. Right. Um, Chicago, Illinois. Yes. How do I know it's in Illinois? Mm. Where is it? It's at the north by the Great yes. Lakes. How do I yes. know that? Yes. Your TV man. Okay. Pensacola, Florida. Right? Uh huh. Uh huh. Flagstaff, Arizona. Wow. Right? How am I doing this? It's Venice, television. California. How do uh -huh. I know this? Uh huh. Your TV man. Wow. It permeates everything. Okay. We mostly watch American media. Really. This is why we know what's going on. Okay. Now, why is that? Because I'm glad you brought it up. It's kind of like when you see a motor accident at the side of the motorway and okay. you like to look and yes. see what's going down. Yes. It's a bit like that. Huh. <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> you can no, take that multiple no, ways. I'm kidding. Right, right. No, I'm no, no. I'm, I'm with you. I'm, I'm with I'm, you. I'm ragging. I'm, I'm with ragging. you. No, no, that's no, that, was only, that was only your previous administration. Yeah, okay, of, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. And it might come back. But, uh, well... <laughs> And so, I mean, but to your I could point. be praying for him. There could, it is. Could there be praying is. for him. There it is. We've got to have something to laugh at. <laughs> All at the same time. <laughs> I think, you know, being American, I understand, like, the way we do everything gives us the ability to laugh at it all in, a, in its own unique way. But even to the idea that a lot of our television music as well, because yeah. even being here, I'll be in the mall and the stores or whatnot, it's and I hear American. American music. I'm thinking, yeah. how am I here? 
but yet I'm hearing things that I would hear over there. Yeah. So why do you think that's the case in your opinion? It's, it's very simple to explain, I okay. think. Uh, and I'm happy to have your YouTube commenters correct me on this one. But yes. My impression is that during the 80s, we had quite a lot more British content. Okay. Like British movies, British music. Mm -hmm. Um, but post-liberation, it switched quite far towards American. Mm. I'm not sure what exactly that was about, but it seemed to time around that time. Mm. Um, so, you know, as kids, we grew up listening to Depeche Mode and Pink Floyd. Okay. And watching Monty Python. Okay. But now we listen to, you know, um, Ice Cube or... Mm -hmm. uh, any American type, you know, what's, Taylor what's Swift, this, Justin I was going to say the, the blonde girl, what's her yep, name? Yep. Taylor Swift. See, there it is. <laughs> uh, so, so, so we have these, um, we have this much stronger cultural influence from the States. And I mm. think it's also got to do with the, the power of the television, right? Yes. So British shows are quite understated. <laughs> um, and the humor is quite deadpan. Mm -hmm. And it's quite subtle. Yes. Uh, so... I think the American humor is more accessible. Okay. Hmm, um, I like that. And then also, just the sheer volume of, of content from Hollywood. Yes, yes. It doesn't, the British can't keep up with correct, that. Correct. Nobody correct. can keep up with that. No. Maybe India. With right. Some, you know, Bollywood. But, right. But, the, you know, there's a certain amount of predictability and comfort in that predictability as well. So the mm. good guy always wins. There's going to be a car chase. Mm -hmm. Or mm. he gets the girl. Mm -hmm. We know how it's going to pan out. So it's like comfort. It's like yes. junk food. It's like, uh, this is a burger. It's going to taste good. Okay. We've had it a hundred times before. Okay. Whereas European stuff tends to be like arty and draining. Okay. Like you feel something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like it's exhausting a bit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now that's fun because even there is a um, Netflix special that I started to watch. It's from uh, Britain. I think it's like, I don't want to say the name of it. But nonetheless, uh, it's from the UK. And I started watching the first episode and I couldn't. I couldn't like finish, mm. I couldn't watch it, and it just didn't resonate. Mm. But I think maybe to what you were saying, so, yeah, so, it so for me, to yeah. so, so for me, I mean, it's not that the stuff doesn't resonate, it's just like uh -huh. it's, it, it's possibly too dramatic, okay, versus the state stuff, which is, I mean, it's dramatic, but yes. it's so over the top, that yes, it's like comical, okay, uh, Michael okay. Bay. Yes. I mean, a Michael yep. Bay yep. movie, like, you yep. know what's going to happen. There's going right. to be a truck flying into a building. Uh -huh. Oh, no, no, no. He's action-packed, explosives. There's going to be explosions. Oh, yeah, yeah, There's yeah, going to yeah. be an explosion, a guy walking heroically away from uh -huh. the explosion. Yeah. See, we when, know what's going on. Well, you know you don't. No, I love that. I love that. Just backtracking slightly to, yes. the, to the, the, the topic of the question, which is yeah. what are the differences? Yeah. So I think, as an American, uh, you probably find yourself quite comfortable here. Very much so. Like a lot of familiar stuff. Yes. Apart from the driving on the, the correct side of correct. the road. There's that. You, you guys drive on the incorrect side. Oh, okay. You know that, right? Well, you know, it depends on who you talk to. <laughs> lots of people I'm sure have told you this. Joke. You know, it's the rubble side of it's, us. It's, it's, one, it's one of our running jokes. Yeah, yeah. We all drive on the wrong side of the road. <laughs> um, so, yeah, there is that factor. So it's the music and the, video and the movies are, are very much American. Uh, we, we kind of obsessively follow American celebs as well, so like you okay. can probably name most of them and who they're dating and all this kind of thing. Wow. Uh, we know your states, we know your capitals, we know your we know wow. your stuff, man. That's impressive. I can tell, I can say Mason Dixon line. Wow, I right. know what that means. Wow. Yeah. I mean, so truth be told, I can say removing General Lee statues. I okay. Can say stuff. That's even recent stuff. Yeah. Okay. I can say. Please, for the love of God, come here where there's no Breonna Taylor, where there's no George Floyd, where there's no Rodney King. Wow. Welcome back to the motherland, man. There it is. Yeah. yeah. No, that's beautiful. And even with all that you just did, I'm always fascinated when I come across different South Africans that are highly aware of what's taking place in the States, even more so than a lot of Americans that are even living in the States itself. And so... To that, I'm, I'm astonished, but even hearing your insights as to why speaks volumes and I can understand it. And then even to now, to your point of saying, you know, welcome home, welcome to South Africa. I love that. And um, 
I can truly say, no, the welcome is felt. Like every time I hear it, I don't take it for granted. And um, at the same time, I know that it's a privilege and an honor to be able to even be here, right? And I will say that too different people that I've come in contact with and some will say like no like what do you mean I would want to be in the states I wouldn't want to stay here I would want to go there and I'm always like taken back by those sentiments and those thoughts now granted Mm -hmm. I am understanding that people go through various things and everybody doesn't have the ability to experience life as we get to and Mm -hmm. have the privilege to do so and so I'm aware Right. Of there are different levels of life that people are living in different struggles that they're having. And maybe through their struggles, they're saying, no, America's better. Mm. But in actuality, if you were to go there in the same state that you're in here, it'd be a lot worse. Um, Certainly for me, I can tell you that. Okay. Okay. Currently, um, I'm employment challenged. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, And the States is kind of brutal to unemployed people. Yes. Like we know about your homeless problem, I believe it's something like 2%. It's high. Yeah, it's high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's something like half Nigeria's homeless level. Mm. So to be able to compare you to Nigeria is... Mm-hmm. Depends on who mm. you're talking to. It all depends on who you're talking to, but I know what you're skating on. <laughs> uh, so, um, so I think, look, I don't want to diss the States. I, th- I think the States has brought a lot of good things to the yes, world. Yes, right. No, I'm definitely a uh, proud American. I will say that. Yeah. So, so, I mean, if I think uh, of, of some of the good things, yes, uh, popularization of modern democracy, mm. uh, popularization of modern constitutional law, mm. um, the concept of everyone equal before the law, mm. I think is pr- largely an American thing. I mean, the French mm. Revolution brought that in but I don't know how they actually practiced it. Okay. And of course in the States, I mean, money talks the same as here, mm-hmm. right? So okay. some are more equal than others. So gotcha. a guy who can afford a fancy lawyer is going to win. Yes. So it's the same here. We know that. Mm. But in principle, it's there. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's on the political side. And then on the on the sort of uh, technological side, the States has made huge differences to the world. Uh, yes. Television, yeah. electric light, mm-hmm. uh, Computers, mm. largely or modern computers at any rate. Mm-hmm. I think the first couple of computers were European, but you just beyond that, the rest like that. were yep. American. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I think the States has done a lot. Um, yes. So it's kind of, there is an element where it's the world leader, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But there are elements that the rest of the world isn't that happy about. Mm. And, and I think it takes quite a lot of self-reflection and honesty. Mm-hmm. Uh, for people in the States to look at those issues. Yes. And I think what's, what's particularly concerning uh, for those of us living in Africa mm-hmm. is to see somebody like your former president describe Africa as an S-hole. Right, 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 right. right. Uh, when he's, he, where has he been here? Has he even come here? Did he even come visit here in his official capacity? I don't think so. Right, I don't think so at all. Uh, so that's not a fair thing to say. And, mm-hmm. and furthermore, it's unfair because it lacks the understanding of the nature na- uh, the nature of colonialism mm. and the history of how Africa got to be in the state that it's in, mm. where South Africa is the richest country on the continent, mm-hmm. where we've got one third of the continent's GDP here. Mm. Uh, we've got the richest square mile here. We've yes. got the most billionaires here. Why? Because of apartheid, because colonialism was allowed to perpetuate long, but it was a special, what's called a special type of colonialism where the colonists moved in mm. and stayed. Mm-hmm. Now we've got a big immigration with an E, ex-migration, leaving, where mm-hmm. there's quite a lot of people leaving to go to Australia, New Zealand, those sort of places, the UK. Um, and a lot of those people cite their reason as leaving as crime. Uh, and that's fair enough, but one also doesn't think like, well, what is the ramifications of leaving? Well, the ramification yeah. is I'm reducing the fiscus for the, the national government, meaning that as a middle class citizen, they won't get my tax anymore. Mm. So that reduces the amount of cash to help the poor, right? It also removes your skill set from the pool. Mm. And for me, that's why it's such a great thing for have, to have African Americans coming here because they're bringing the skills, that they're bringing the money, mm. so they're filling those those gaps of people mm. leaving, um, and that'll help this country to stay running mm. and, and able to run. Mm-hmm. So I think it's a great thing, and mm. um, we've seen some similar stuff in Cape Town where quite a lot of Europeans have moved. Yes, but I'm sure your your experience of Cape Town. Yeah, how, it was. How, how it was did you okay. find it? It was okay. I think I went at the wrong time, being yeah. that it was very windy and very busy. December, Christmas Day. 
windy in December, okay. Oh, it was horrible. So much so that the tours were canceled. Um, the water tour, the going up Table okay. Mountain, that wasn't an option. And like I said, it was a lot of traffic. And so because I wasn't able to experience the things that a lot of people do and take mm. the pictures that a lot of people take, right? Um, it wasn't, it wasn't the best. It definitely had feelings like California. Mm. Felt like various parts, whether it's Malibu or Manhattan Beach mm. specifically. Felt more like that which is outside of LA. But with that being said, it was okay, mm. right? But I was also surprised of the landscape at Cape Town being that you come out of the airport and then immediately as you're on the interstate, you can see the townships right there, which I was surprised. You know, that caught me by surprise. However, largely because I've never been there. Mm -hmm. Now that I go back, I know to expect it. Yeah. However, you know, that caught me by surprise, but. Well, that's, I mean, a function of, um the apartheid geography being sort of pushed to its boundaries. Correct. So previously what they would try to do, it's called apartheid spatial geography, so what they try to do is hide low income areas. Right. Even uh, in the States. Yep. So if you look to the south of Joburg, you'll see that there's now lots of uh, warehouse crating and mm. uh, shipping crating and that kind of thing. Those used to be uh, landmines, not landmines, what's the word? Gold mines. Gold mines. Not, not gold mines. Sorry, my brain's not okay. working right now. Okay. What's big, down there? Big pile of sand gotcha. that's dug out of the ground from the gold mine. Oh, okay. Mine dump. Mine dump. Okay. Sorry. I mine dump. No idea why I couldn't remember that. No, word. it's cool. Mine dump. So basically a big hill. Yes. Uh, of of the, the remains from mining. Mm -hmm. And that would hide the low-income area. So you wouldn't see it, you know, because it's unsightly. Oh. And there was an incident, I think, last year or two years ago, where oh. they, they did a clean-up of Cape Town and they went rounding up homeless people because they were unsightly. Oh. So, so Cape Town, I mean, it's a beautiful city, depending on where you are. Right. And you get good services there. Okay. D depending on which suburb you're talking about. Okay. Uh, and that's because they're, they're run by uh, a party that is slightly leaning more towards the right mm. than the rest of the country. Okay. So th th there's a whole bunch of politics in this country that people need to be aware of. Okay. Um, and you'll find that a person's political slant will generally depend on their demographics. Mm. The extent to which they benefited under apartheid. Okay. Uh, so those who benefit under apartheid will tend to be more right-leaning. Okay. Uh, those who suffered under it would tend to be more left-leaning. Okay. Um, so in my own case, uh, I forgot to credit somebody very important. Uh, one of the things you would have noticed in South Africa is a lot of people have domestic workers. Right. 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 That's because we can afford them. Yes. So much like the Mexican scenario in the States okay. where this is low income labor, mm. uh, we've got the same problem here. And the problem is it was a, a deliberate production of apartheid. Mm. So in 1953, the apartheid government created an education system called Bantu education. Okay. Bantu meaning the people the people. And um, its purpose was to oppress. It was uh, inferior curriculum with inferior content. Oh. And the Prime Minister at the time um, said, and I quote, what use has the African child for mathematics? Mm. So they were brought up under that system to yes. be cleaners, gardeners, etc. Wow. Uh, and hence not develop useful skill set. And as a result, because this is the majority you're talking about, the theory was that you do a kind of extractive capitalism approach, much mm -hmm. like in the south below the Mason-Dixon line, mm -hmm. where you're going to pick cotton. Right, right, right. Or tobacco, if you're in Virginia, say. If you're in Virginia, right, yeah. right. So you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we follow your stuff, man. Yes, yes. Uh, so you'd find that we did something similar. These guys are for the gold mines. These guys are for the farms. Wow. And that's your migrant labor. So the men go to the cities to do all this work uh, or to the farms to do this work and then the women will be in the rural areas with the kids. Mm. So you'll hear people say I'm going home and it means they're going to the rural areas, an area that was formerly up Bantu Stan, Okay. and which you know in America would be a reservation. Mm. Um, but what happens with those guys is uh, because of the low income uh, type education levels they got, is you have a massive poverty problem. So of course. unemployment is ballpark 40%. Mm. Uh, and that's because, very simply, we're still dealing with the ramifications. Okay. So somebody who was in grade 12 when Mandela was released uh, is now my age. Mm. Um, and that person 
what they wouldn't have been able to get into the universities because the universities require high GPA, right? Okay. So, what can they do? Gardening, house cleaning, mm. mine working, okay. driving a taxi. Okay. Right. So, unfortunately, the majority have had this this oppression and they have the after effects of this oppression. Mm. And because the budget was extracting capital from a small middle class who at the time were just white, um, I think at the population at the time was about two million. Okay. So a really small number of people. Yes. And then it's now grown to about eight million. Mm. But still, it's still a small number of people relative to the whole population. So yes. if you look at the percentage of population, it's roughly the same. Okay. Uh, and that tax money, if you if you do the math, you can see that it would work out to like a thousand rand per person per mm -hmm. per month, mm -hmm. which has got to provide police, road, schooling, hospitals, mm. uh, border patrol. Um, all these things, mm. how can you do that with a thousand a month? Thousand. Nothing, it's right, nothing. Right. You can barely provide food. Yes. So, so when you're looking at that kind of tax situation where that's the country's budget, you can see why nothing happens, why it's so slow to get anything done. Okay. And speaking from my, my 10 years in government, I can see mm. the ma so many times projects were just stopped because we had no money, because Treasury okay. would say no. Okay. Because they okay. just didn't have the money. They didn't have it. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, our budget uh, when I was uh, working in education was, I think, 1.2 trillion. Okay. And it literally worked out to about 800 rand per person. It's wow. nothing. It's wow. useless. Now, the if big number it, sounds huge. Yeah, but now but then if when you, you boil it yeah, down. Yeah, but now if you're giving COVID grant, which isn't still in place, okay. 350 rand a month, that cuts your available money for police, hospitals, mm. yada, down to 650 a month. It's useless. It's okay. so useless. Okay. We need more people bringing in money. We need more people with skills. We need more people transferring the skills instead mm. of running away. Mm -hmm. Wow. So yeah. when you see, which is a whole nother light, which I'm even loving seeing it from your perspective, as you see people moving here mm. from America or other countries, if you will, you see the opportunity for growth, expansion for uh, knowledge and information to yeah. be able to come back, whereas yeah. in some are leaving. And so that's a nice way of seeing it, which, you know, makes you more appreciative and uh, makes the welcoming process the better. But I mean, at the same time, it's, it's, it's nice. It's nice to be able to hear it from that perspective. And so, as you say, some South Africans are moving to Australia, New Zealand, and the mm. UK, and things like that, largely under the umbrella of leaving crime or mm. moving away from crime. Okay. Yeah, either crime or the other complaint is typically bad service delivery. Okay. Now, I find that particular complaint to not be a good complaint because a lot of these people are middle class, so they pay for their hospital, they pay for their schooling, they mm -hmm. don't get for free. Mm. So the service delivery complaint refers to government provided services, so okay. free schooling from government, free hospital from Coffee. government. Yes. But if you go to any of these free provisions, you'll find that they aren't quite up to the standard correct. of private. Correct. Because mon the money being thrown is, is less. Is correct. And, and the typical complaint from the right wing in this country is, is um, corruption. Mm -hmm. um, and having worked where I worked previously, which I, I don't want to mention right now, yes. I'll mention it off camera, mm -hmm. uh, I can tell you that the assessment of the, by the way, British guy who assessed the level of corruption, it worked out to something like 2%. Mm. Now, you're not going to stop a country at 2%. Mm -mm. So I don't think that's really where the problem lies. Okay. It is a big problem, but okay. it's not where the problem lies. Okay. And, and so a lot of these people are, are buying this propaganda that it's corruption, corruption. That's, that's not really where the problem lies. The problem lies in there's just not enough money to go around. There's just not enough. People are depressed. If you go to a government building and try do a project to deliver to the people and you've got no budget and you're being yelled at to deliver, it's depressing to work in that True. situation. True. So, so that's kind of where we are. Um, but I, I keep wanting to mention somebody who was so important to me before I forget. Okay. It's, off, it's not exactly off topic. It's okay. political. No, it's cool. So, so we were talking about servants, right? Yes. So during the 1980s, uh, like any white family, we, ha we had a domestic servant and we had somebody clean the garden. Yes. And the lady who worked for us, her name was Spongile Shongwe, her early woman. Uh, and in fact, I saw her um, a couple of years ago. She found me on Facebook. 
Wow. Uh, and I thanked her and I said, you know what, you're one of the people who woke me up to what was happening in this country. Wow. Uh, so she, she seemed to, she had all kinds of stuff uh, on her possession that would have got her arrested had it been seen by the police. Mm. Uh, for example, Soviet money. Okay. From the Soviet Union. Okay. And um, I looked at that stuff and I thought she must be SACP or, or one of these, these radical parties, like okay. not ANC, like far left. Okay, okay. she had the stuff. And it made me realize just how profound the anger was mm. towards the regime. Okay. And, th and that really woke me up. And then one time we had a, a dispute where she said, she said something like, is it because I'm black that you won't do this? And I'm like, absolutely not. Where did you get that from? And I was so shocked. And I realized that the way I was coming across was in some way patronizing or, mm. or not respectful. Mm -hmm. And that helped me to realize, to, to moderate how I speak to people. Okay. And I was like, I was a kid, I was like 15 or something. Wow. And that really woke me up. Wow. Like, you're, 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 this is not a cool place. Okay. So, so I think it's important when you come here to understand this background. Yes. And to understand when you, when you look at how people are living uh, and who's living where how that came about. Mm -hmm. A lot of them will say, no, I pulled myself up by my bootstraps. I worked hard at school. Mm. Sure, but you were also born into an English-speaking family. Mm. So you had an advantage straight off. Okay. I often point out to people, in China, grade 12 is written in Chinese, mm -hmm. exam. In Germany, the exam at the end of grade 12 is written in German. Mm. In South Africa, the grade 12 exam is written in English. True. It's not written in Zulu. Mm. So being born into an English-speaking family, you have such a huge advantage. Okay. The universities are all in English, mm. except maybe Stellenbosch. Okay. Um, so that is what privilege means, and people don't understand that. They think, no, I worked so hard. Well, maybe you did, but you also got a silver spoon there. Mm. And because people tend to compare themselves to the first world, like, they've got a TV, I've got a TV. Mm -hmm. They've got a car, I've got a car. They've got a house, I've got a car. So it's like first world, yes. right? This is first world. Gotcha, yes, yes, yes. So, so you, you're in this first world scenario, so you think you're kind of entitled to it somehow? Mm. Off, off whose backs? Mm. Off whose backs? Right. Who built this country, actually? Right, right. Who was actually picking up the bricks and putting them in place? Mm -hmm. And who was standing there shouting? Mm. So, so when people look at the scenario and say, no, I worked so hard, I'm like, well, yeah, but you also had certain advantages. And it's not a request for an apology. It's not a request for you to beat yourself and, and do this whole self-flagellation thing, like I'm such a bad person. It's not that. It's just saying, look, acknowledge. I think in the States you guys do acknowledgments, mm -hmm. right? So you in say, I, we are on the land of mm -hmm. the Cherokee, or we're on the land of the Apache, okay, right? right, right. We are on the land of the Bapedi and the Basutu here. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. Do they own this building? Mm -mm. Probably not. Right. So, recognize that, just recognize that. Yeah. And have some humility. Mm. That's all the ask is, that's all the ask is. Mm -hmm. And once you have that in place and you understand that, you can stop being so arrogant about how you got to success because it's not because you were in first world scenarios, it's because you were in a first world scenario on the backs of oppression, mm -hmm. slavery, Nazism, mm -hmm. effectively Nazism. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of the AWB? AWB, no sir. Okay, so they've kind of died out because their leader was murdered. Okay. And he was murdered because he was a very unpleasant person and he Copy. would hit his workers with a, a whip, wow. like full-on southern slavery style. Okay. Uh, and he um, led this movement. <coughs> it stands for Afrikaner Weerstand Beweger, mm. which means Afrikaner Resistance Movement. Okay. So Afrikaner is the term for persons of Dutch descent. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've got some family members who, so like my grandmother, for example. Okay. Uh, so you said at the beginning you'd expect me to be Afrikaans. Mm -hmm. No, because there was the Dutch-British thing going down here. Yes. And in fact, in as much as America had a civil war mm -hmm. in the 1800s, uh, so we had a kind of a civil war here as well between okay. the British and the Dutch. Right. And it was kind of about slavery as well, mm -hmm. actually, because the British 
gave the slaves some rights in Cape Town mm -hmm. and the Dutch were like New York and they got into their wagons and went into the inland mm. to get away from the British. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was kind of a similar issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, except there was also gold and diamonds thrown into the mix to make it worse. Okay. Um, but backtracking onto the, the point here, this guy, uh, this guy's name was uh, Eugene Terblanche, which okay. and Terblanche literally means white earth. Hmm. Okay. He ran this organization. It, they were para paramilitary, so they wore brown, like Hitler's brown shirts. Okay. They carried a big red flag. Hmm. On that big red flag was a big white circle. In the middle of the big white circle was a black icon. And that black icon didn't have four arms. It had three arms, but it was the same icon. Wow. And they'd march around like that. Huh. Literal, literal neo-Nazis. Wow. Okay, so I understand where you're coming. Yes. It's, the situation's more complicated than it looks. Right. Uh, fortunately, those guys seem to have fizzled out. Okay. Um, and they were kind of predominantly, I think, in the northwest province. That's what I was going to ask. Yeah. Okay, northwest. Yeah, our farming area. Okay. Uh, so, so that we don't see much about them. We haven't seen much anything about them for years. Okay. Fortunately. Okay. Um, but the point is, you still have people with that attitude. Mm. And you can't necessarily guess if a person's got that attitude. Yes. Um, everyone likes to say that they, they, accept, they accept the canon or the, the, the mantra of the rainbow nation. Okay. Uh, but not everyone believes it in their head, and sometimes they'll keep quiet about it. Mm. Um, some of them will go to Australia or something like that okay. to get away from it. So okay. They can, be in it with their, their kind. Gotcha. Um, but some of them will just hang around mm. and complain. Okay. Um, so, so those people, unfortunately, need to actually just come to the party. They need to do what Daryl Davis did. Mm. You know about Daryl Davis? No. In the States. Uh, I think he was, where was he based? He, one of the southern states. I can't remember which See, state. I'm telling you, you know more. You, you yeah. Enlighten so, so, me. So he's, he's, he's a, he, I think he was a jazz pianist. Okay. He played nightclubs in the south. Okay. I can't remember if it was Louisiana. Sounds like it. I mean, yeah. jazz, south, it has Louisiana on Yeah, it. so it could be there, it could be South Carolina. I can't remember which state it was. I'd have to look it up. Okay. Daryl Davis, very cool guy. Okay. So he'd play, and then he'd go to the bar afterwards, have his drink, and if he saw a, like a trucker type guy, he'd go up to him and talk to him and make buddies with him. He discovered eventually that a lot of these guys were clan. Oh. He got several of them, I can't remember the figure, something like 30, to drop their clan robes, including, I think, a grand wizard. Hmm. Yeah. Just, through conversation. Just through conversation. I'm a human being. Yes. Let's talk. Yeah. And, and I think a lot of the guys that, that tend to be far right here just haven't done that. They haven't done that effort. They haven't okay. made that bother. Just, just talk to someone. Okay. And, and see what they're actually about. Right. And... And I think that, that guy's got that great lesson for everyone. It's just, yes. just make the effort. Just make the effort. Yeah. Have the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. And you realize how alike we truly are. And, and actually, there's no threat. You're not going to get murdered. In right, right, right. Just be a, basically a decent human being. Right. And, and I think that's what we really need here, mm. um, apart from money. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we should talk about tourists. We can, we can. Let's, let's, let's get off these depressing topics. Right, we? but no, I mean, it's, <laughs> it could be, right? It definitely can be, but I think it's beautiful in what you're sharing and the information that you have, because even prior to the recording, we talked about, you know, even the friends that you had growing up and so forth and so on. So I under, I'm saying that to say I understand how you think the way you think and the way you see different things, which is a nice way of seeing the world, seeing life, seeing people in general. And so if we were to make the transition into tourism, right, which South Africa, I mean, that's one of the main money makers, if you mm. will, outside of the precious metals and such that brings in a lot of money into the continent. And so, or excuse me, to the country, mm. specifically of South Africa. However, to talk about tourism, what would you say is one of the uh, main tourism things that people can do coming to South Africa that you would even recommend? That I would recommend? That you would recommend specifically? Um, yeah, it depends on what you're, what you're interested in, what, what sure. your identity is around. Sure. So a lot of people come here for the game. Yes. The, the animals. Yep. And if you, if you look at my tourism book, mm -hmm. uh, which I wrote in the UK, 
Because uh, uh, I, was, I was sitting there thinking, like, why do I like South Africa? Why is it, what is what's missing here yes. in the UK? Yes. Um, and I came up with about 100 pages of stuff that I liked. Yes. Specifically Joburg. Yes, which is in the title of the book, An Insider's Guide to Johannesburg. And, I mean, I have the digital copy. Thank you. However, sure. others can uh, purchase it, and we'll put the details down below. Yeah. But if you were just to share, where can people come in contact with the book that you're even speaking of now? Yeah, so you can buy it on Amazon. And, mm -hmm. and by the way, it's, it's cost price. Uh, hardly make a thing. I think I make 50 cents or something mm -hmm. in a copy. Mm -hmm. uh, because actually my, my goal is to get more people to tour Joburg yes. instead of, uh, say, Cape Town. Yes. Um, yes, because Cape Town's kind of a cliche. Everyone goes there. It is. Uh, and it is. That's not to say it's a bad thing. Cape Correct. Town's beautiful. I really like Cape Town. Mm -hmm. If I'm going somewhere in this country, I'll choose mostly to go to Cape Town because okay. cause it's pretty. Right, right. Uh, but I think Joburg's way underrated. And I'm pretty sure from what you've seen. Yeah. Am I right? Oh, 100%. It's, 100%. This is an amazing city. It's, 100%. it's fantastic. 100%, which is why we even talk the way we talk on the channel and even with the various people that we have on, they'll share how beautiful Johannesburg is. Mm -hmm. And to your point, as opposed to Cape Town, which is widely known and shared and mm -hmm. uh, suggested to be the place that you visit when you come to South Africa, there are so many things in Johannesburg that you can actually do. Mm -hmm. However, while in the UK or London, I believe you said... Edinburgh. In Britain. Edinburgh. Edinburgh. Yeah, it's the Scottish capital. Boom, Scottish capital. Okay, you came up with this book. And so, in it all, right, you talk about tourism. And so, what would be the spot? What would be the thing that you... <sighs> it's, it's a tough one. Okay. Um, again, it depends on your identity. In other words, who you are as a person. Yep. So, if you are mostly in love with nature and mostly concerned about environment collapse and mostly concerned about ch climate change. Mm -hmm. Probably the Kruger Park or any nearby uh, game reserve. So okay. Johannesburg's got a lot of nearby game reserves. Yes. My personal favorite is the Lion Rhino Park. Really? Yeah, it's very close. Okay, uh, I've heard of it. Yeah. So I was invited to it, actually. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, it's coming back. The last time I was there, it was quite fun. The, the, the one female lion had cubs, and she was defending them. So as we drove past, she chased us and whacked the car wow. a few times. Because of uh, that. So she was okay. like, go away. Okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, Ryan, uh, Lion Rhino Park, they've got everything except... I don't think they've got leopards, and I don't think they've got giraffe. Okay. But I saw everything else. Gotcha. Um, so, so it depends. You can look at each website for each place. Yes. Uh, there's another one my kids like as well. I'm trying to remember what it's called now. Dinner King. Yes, so, so, I've so, heard of King. Yeah. Okay. Dinner King. So, so that uh, is a bit it's kind of so. Like, if, if this is Joburg, like mm. a circle, mm -hmm. uh, Line Rhino is kind of northwestish, mm. and Dinner King's straight north, um, but north of Pretoria. Okay. Uh, so they're all within driving distance. Yes. Like less than a day. It's about two hours ish. There it is. See, again, uh, the beauty of Joburg. Yeah. Now, I have to talk about it because we talk about it a lot on this channel. And even to break down the book, right, you have various topics that you address, one of them being food. Mm -hmm. And then you talk about the various cuisines that you can experience while yeah. here in Johannesburg and even give um, restaurant recommendations yeah, yeah. by name. Yeah. And so I, I go to the pizza section because... For our family, do pizza every Friday. I saw your pizza session, <laughs> and I was very, very, very disappointed in your daughter. I was very disappointed oh, in her. She was, she yes. was, she was asking for Pizza Hut, and uh -huh. I, I was like crossing myself, man. <laughs> I was like, no, that's blasphemy. Yeah, but I see on here. What do you have? You have Pizza Perfect. So we tried Pizza Perfect. Now I, I, so this is one thing I've come to recognize here, which is interesting in the fact that. Though you have a chain restaurant, the experience can be different no matter which restaurant you go to. Correct, yes. Which is totally off the thought of chain restaurants for us being American. Yeah, the yeah. idea of a chain is the fact that you should be able to yeah, sure. consistency. Yeah, sure. Because it's all on the Are you referring name. to your McDonald's incident? McDonald's, right? You know of McDonald's, mm -hmm. Pizza Hut, you have Burger King. Those are chains, right? And they're, yeah, they're pretty just, they're just not nice. consistent. Right. And I'm ascending to say, there's Pizza Perfect on your list. Yeah. We've been to one. Now, granted, it might not have been the one to go no. to. And the experience wasn't, it wasn't good. Really? No. 
No. Which one did you go to? Um, Maybe you shouldn't name them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll tell you off camera. But right. we went there and we had two different pizzas and yeah. some chicken fingers, chicken tenders or whatever. Yeah. And they hated it. But I come to find out. So I say that. But then I say this to maybe support why we didn't like it. Yeah. We recognize that here, pizza chains and different things like that aren't big on sauce. Like they're more heavier on the cheeses on the pizzas. Whereas right. us, we love more saucy pizza I see. and not necessarily a bunch of cheese. I want to disagree with you slightly. So it's my okay. experience of American pizza chains. Okay. So Pizza Hut and it's ilk. Um, hmm. Is that you've got a pre-made base okay so it's not really pizza uh, oh yeah no 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 no. i, 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 would, I mean call, i would call that a we would call it a biscuit in this country you call it a cookie oh. in america okay you know like okay. it's pre-made it's yes. shaped by a machine it's yeah. got little holes in the bottom yeah right yeah that's not that's not a pizza man right that, that's an abomination okay when, when jehovah sees that talk to us he wants to smite it with lightning <laughs> It's not. It's not food, man. I like that. Okay. It's 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 not cool. Okay. So but the, so what I'm going to say is I think it's because you're used to. Yeah. Not pizza. Yeah. So when you eat real pizza okay. for the first time, which okay. is what you just did. Okay. You're probably like, oh my god, this is different. Yes. Rather than it's bad. Yes. 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 So it didn't meet your expectations because you were expecting Pizza Hut. If you want Pizza Hut, go to Debonair's. Debonair's is probably the. Debonair's closest. is nice. It's horrible. Oh. It's not pizza. It's a blasphemy. That says a lot. Right. So we're wrong. Because I, I will wrong. eat debonair. I you're like just wrong. It's like, it's like Burger King and McDonald's is not really a burger. Correct. It's not really. It's that not, is true. It's not cool. Okay. Have you had steers? I have not. I've had their fries. The chips. But I haven't Go had a burger. Go get a king steer. You will, you will achieve nirvana. Huh. Yeah. I love that phrase. And, and you by, will achieve nirvana. And by the way. Mm -hmm. Today, I, and I'm punting steers here, even though I don't pay me, just because their food is yummy. Mm -hmm. Wacky Wednesday. Today is Wacky Wednesday. I'm going today. And what do they do on Wacky they Wednesday? They give you two burgers for the price of one. Oh. Yeah, it's like, it's like 30 bucks a, a, a burger, so mm -hmm. it's 60 bucks for two. Okay. They don't give you chips, you have to ask for separate. But, yes. Um, what is that, $1.50-ish per, per right. burger? Right, 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 right. Yeah. And it's... And the best burger you'll get from McDonald's is inferior to a Wacky Wednesday. Wow. So like a quarter pound with cheese is like, mm, mm, mm. it's okay. Mm -hmm. I can tolerate. Mm -hmm. So that's fast food, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, look, you, 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 your franchises are pretty consistent. Yes. Uh, you, you mentioned an incident with McDonald's where they uh, chucked stuff back. I've yeah. never heard of that in my yeah. life. Right. But we... That being said, understand where we are. Yes. And that throwing away food is not cool. Correct. This thing where, where in the States you can get arrested for dumpster diving or for mm -hmm. selling stuff that should be chucked. Right. Wow. In this country, that's just not cool mm. because they are starving people. Yes. They're actually starving people. Yeah. yeah. So, for example, a couple of times when I've been hungry, I've gone to a supermarket and I've said, hey, guys, have you got end of life stuff that I can buy? And it's fine. Mm. Even though it's like it should be chucked, it's fine. Mm -hmm. You're not going to die. And I think in the States, because you're overly litigious, right? You don't want to give somebody a eight-hour-old sandwich yes. just in case they get salmonella poisoning, mm -hmm. and right? Sue or something. And sue. Mm -hmm. But that's not going to happen here. Mm. The most is the guy will just be like, "Oh, oops! Now I got to go to the bathroom," mm. and he'll come get his ne his next one anyway because he doesn't really have a choice. Right? Yeah. So we're not nearly as litigious here. The whole yes. myth of the, the, the McDonald's cup woman. Yes. Right? Yep. You wow, just, you, you, don't, right, you, you don't all are aware. We, that's don't true. Get, we don't get that stuff here. Yeah. Now we can tell, and, and with that, so of course we go out to eat a lot with our family, which have kids. And then mm. we are going out with other families that have kids, which here there are a lot of different restaurants yeah. that cater to kids yeah. as far as their entertainment and yeah. their ability not just to sit at the table the whole time. Yeah. Which in the States, we were talking amongst each other. Yeah. We were saying that could never work because, say, the kid falls or the kid trips. You're gonna sue. They would sue and the restaurant would go down, right? And litigation fees and the process galore. And we were just saying how, you know, because of that type mentality, we miss out on yeah. so much 
uh, this country we've got things. more of a we've got more of a so so we consider ourselves more free here yes because uh, we can actually say what we like, yeah. except okay. one thing, you don't be racist here. Yeah. Okay. That's absolutely unacceptable. Yes. In the States you can get away with it, but that's because you've got a majority who's been privileged for a long time. Correct. So they can say that shit. Correct. Not, yeah. Correct. You'll go to jail. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, anything else you can basically do. It's like mm. we're not phased. Uh, so even before um, we legalized weed, okay. people would just smoke it at clubs because nobody would care. Okay. So it is legalized here? Uh, you can't manufacture in bulk. Okay. You can have a plant for yourself. Oh, okay. You can carry, I think, 30 grams on your person. Okay. Uh, you can smoke as long as you're not indoors in a public place. Mm. Uh, so like in a park, say. Okay, because I've seen different yeah. stands in the mall. I thought, hmm, I didn't know it was legal here. And then I saw yeah, there the was stands a in the mall. So the stands in the mall actually aren't selling weed. They're oh, selling okay. CBD oil. Okay. So you're still not allowed to manufacture and sell the plant. Yes. You're only allowed to sell CBD oil. Okay. And related products like vapes. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you're not allowed to sell the actual smoking product, but you're mm-hmm. allowed to own and you're allowed to grow and you're allowed to cut and whatever. Personally, I don't like it. Mm-hmm. I think it, it, the smell makes me slightly queasy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So right. I, I, I'm, it's not for me, but if yes, you want to no. do it, go ahead. Correct. So, so, so the point is, we we got these freedoms. So another example is, we have. Um, not so great um, nighttime activities. Okay. If you see what I'm yes. saying. Yes. Yep. 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 So again, we turn a blind eye to that stuff okay. just because it's your indaba, okay. as we say here. Okay. It's your problem. Okay. So we've got kind of a, a Darwin Award view here, which mm. is you you play stupid games, get stupid prizes. We're not going to save you. Mm. Uh, so there are laws against this, 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 and this, mm-hmm. but people just kind of ignore it. Mm. Um, and it's not really so much because we don't care it's just because we think for ourselves and we're like yeah it's not really going to hurt anyone Mm -hmm. Uh, so as long as there's that sort of understanding Mm -hmm. we've got bigger fish to fry we've got murders going down we've got hijackings going down we've got corruption going down chasing somebody about whether they've got 35 grams of weed we don't care gotcha gotcha Uh, uh, me and my partner were recently watching um, Chris Hansen Mm -hmm. okay okay because we discovered this thing and we were fascinated by this and we were like, wow, look at the American cops. <laughs> down on the ground, down on the ground. Yep. And yep. we were like, it's a process. Wow. Yeah. I mean, our cops, to get them to come out, <laughs> you basically have to report a murder and then they might okay. come out, right? Okay, right, which I had a friend of mine that had a fire that was taking place <laughs> in their yard. Sorry, sorry. Called. It wasn't until the next day that the firefighters actually came. And of course the fire was out at that Obviously. point. But he was just like, how? Why? Why? Why is this taking place? Mm. But, you know, that's... Look, it's, it's a sim- jokes aside, it's a symptom of the collapse of public services, which is why okay. there's so much private services around here. Ah, uh, so, okay. so in fact, I've even seen a local security company starting to offer fire services for this reason. Um, so Seriously? If, yep. So you're going to end up... Security services. P- offering fire offering services. fire services. Yeah. So you're going to find that basically everything's going to get privatized at this rate. So this is why I'm so keen on more people with money coming in. Mm. So we can get public services back on track. Okay. And it's really not about incompetence. It's not about corruption. It's got to do with not enough money. The money. Mm-hmm. Um, so putting that aside, the reason you all have such a great fire service is because you live in little wooden houses. Yes. Why do you make your houses out of wood? Please explain. The rest of the world, the rest of the world wants to know. You know, why it wasn't houses? until I came. And I'm Chopping tell down you why. forests is not cool. Why, why do you make your houses out of wood? It wasn't until we moved here that Three I recognized we were doing made something a house wrong. Out of wood, got blown down by the wolf. Hello, we say the story, but we don't act like we recognize what's being said. The but brick house stands up. It's cheaper. That's why. Really? It's well. That's why it's being done and accepted because it's cheaper for the builders, for the contractors, for the construction right. workers to do it. And of course, it's about money at the end of the day. Yeah. So if you can build this home, right, that quickly, though has quickly and cheaply, it benefits the people that are building it. As opposed to when I came here and recognized they're building with bricks and cement blocks, which yeah. in Florida they'll do cement blocks on the bottom floor. Yeah. 
precisely, but then as well, they'll go up sometimes because yeah. of, we're prone to hurricanes sure, there. Sure. However, I came here and recognized bricks and everywhere. cement blocks are everywhere. They are the standard. I'm like, whoa, making but it, the cost of a home built like that in the States would be astronomical okay. that people would not want to yeah. do that. And so it's because of that, yeah. that wood homes are the standard. Okay. And, and when paper you walls. do, and paper walls, what the hell? You That's know, the norm. Here's, here's my concern, right? Yes. If your parents' room is next to your kids' room? Mm-hmm. Correct. And that's why you look at the floor plan of a home. You move you the say, bed away from the wall. Uh, there's that. But the, you, as a parent, you look at the floor plan and say, where is my room compared to the kids' room? Put a bathroom in between. Oftentimes, there's a family room or the living room in between just to give that space. That's what but for to me. your point, I mean, it's, it's not beneficial and it's, it's not, you know, but it is economically beneficial to the builders, the developers, okay. the neighborhood owners uh, that puts up these residents and you know we buy okay. but then you come here and you recognize there's another way and yeah. so you know your standard goes up however yeah. getting back to the book right yeah. i love how you break down the various aspects of different lives right or the different things that you can expect here in johannesburg yeah. one of the chapters is on weather which i wish i knew of before coming Travis here weather's a wild wild ride hey it's a wild ride that you take place. Coaster, it takes man. place daily. Yeah. It's a wild ride daily. So right yeah. now it's sunshine. Yeah. In about an hour or so, it could be you rain and hail. Lightning. Yeah. And lightning all in like the same lightning? day. I'm well, used to where, lightning. Where are you from the, in the States? Well, we lived in Tampa, Florida, which is the okay. lightning capital of the really? world. And so I'm used to lightning. lightning. I thought lightning was more of a Midwest thing in the States, like oh. Kansas. I mean, there's there is there as well. That's However, tornado Tampa, Valley, right? Yes, definitely. A lot of tornadoes. However, Tampa specifically, we get a lot of oh, lightning. That's interesting. Even our hockey team and so forth. I would have thought that being that close to the coast, you would have... How far inland is Tampa? I'm not sure. No, I mean, Tampa starts on the beach. Oh, from Clearwater, okay. then it goes okay. into Tampa itself. But, I mean, it's all considered the Tampa Bay okay. area. Right? Do you like DeSantis? Do you mean Ryan. like him? I mean, I mean it was, he was our governor, right? And so there's that. Say one good thing. <laughs> he's quite a handsome He's taller guy. now. <laughs> Apparently he's got shoe issues. I've heard he's got shoe issues. He's like Tom taller Cruise. Now. I heard Tom Cruise has shoe issues. I mean, well. you know, hey, issues, enhancements. Everybody does what they need to do to make themselves feel better at the end of the day. Let's leave it there. <laughs> there it we is. Don't, we don't want to annoy any Republican <sighs> viewers. Fun times, good times. Fun times but then times. even down to the nightlife and sports, which... Sports. What's your go-to sport? Let me ask you that. Me, I'm lazy as hell. Okay. I'm really lazy. So physically, none of them, but watching them, what would you say? Uh, watching them, I think for Americans, probably you guys would enjoy rugby the most. Well, I mean you specifically. Me right? specifically, no, I don't watch anything. None of them. No. Oh, okay. So I'm very anti-competitive. I don't oh. like anything that's competitive or us versus them, hence my stance politically. Nice. Um, so that so transcends... Everything, Every, everything. Anything, com anything competitive makes me anxious. I don't like it. Mm. Um, so I don't generally watch sports. I'm okay with people doing individual sports where they yes. like improving themselves. Okay. But then again, it seems indulgent. Mm. Like it's, it's only about you. You're not uplifting a community or something like that. So we did have some sanction busting sportsmen. So for example, Hussein Ayub, who's a Muslim guy. Okay. He died recently. Uh, he was 80 something. Uh, he was a cricketer. Okay. And he used to take underprivileged kids and teach them cricket and that kind of thing. So yes. that kind of sportsman I'm, I'm on board with. Okay. Um, but these kind of individualist glory hogs. Mm. Okay. Um, so, yeah, but fr from an American perspective, I mean, we've got cognates, right? So baseball is similar to cricket. Yes. NFL is similar rugby. to, to mm -hmm. rugby. Mm -hmm. um, except rugby is for, like for real men and NFL is for, for not so real men. To say, like, <laughs> I mean, come on, guys. You're wearing body armor. I like you're that. Wearing, you're wearing body armor. Man. I like that. How do you get concussions if you're wearing body armor? I How? like the thought. I like. I mean, it's because of these a friend massive of mine got men. Concussions. They're like. You said again. A friend of mine actually ended up with concussion. Was Playing down what? Out for like six months from rugby. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah, not cool. Yeah. No. I mean, it's not. And I mean, now they're stronger, faster, and. Truth be told, some are even wearing less pads, right? And now, granted, in the oh, helmet, really? yeah, I mean, in because States. of speed. 
right? Oh, and then sure. even like knee pads, the things are becoming yeah, obsolete look, because they want to be faster. They yeah. want to be better. They want to improve. Look, to be honest with you, I, I actually think the American way is better because I mm. think the whole concussion thing, just to prove you macho, isn't great. Yes. Uh, but if you watch our rugby, it's pretty brutal. Oh, it is. It have, is. You, have you seen the, the New Zealanders? I mean, no. The Kiwis. Because I only watch like the, the World Cup. I usually like watching the opening against the Kiwis because they do the haka, which is a Maori war dance. Really? Okay. Yeah, in you the see beginning. they do like this, we're going to cut your throat threat. It's like, oh. like mm. this, they do oh. this gesture. Oh. Okay. So it's a literal war dance they would do when Captain Cook and other colonials would like arrive in New Zealand to like yeah. colonize a place. They'd mm. be like, we're going to beat you up. Mm. Watch out. And then so so that's they the war dance. That over. So they brought that to the rugby. Oh, so it's quite true to watch. Oh, that's fine. That's yeah, fun. fun. Well, I mean, see, there he is. Yeah. You found some amusement within sports itself. Yeah. Um, but then even going to, as you even talk about as well, right, the theme parks and casinos, which... So there's a lot of sports you can do around here. Let's, just, let's just stick with sports for a bit. I'll okay. T- so I'll tell you. So, so, so South Africa is sports mad. Uh, and again, I'm, I'm a bit weird in that respect. Uh, mm. Most South Africans love sport. Um, so there's, there's, there's soccer, football, whatever yes. anyone call it. Yes. Uh, there's rugby, there's cricket. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there's a lot of indoor stuff as well, right? Yeah. Uh, golf, we've got, I think, nine or ten golf courses in yes. Joburg. Yes, yes. Um, personally, I think it's a waste of land. It should be low-income housing, but that's just mm. me being a radical leftist. That's all right. Um, and then there's this I, game. I'm not going to make Adam. friends. I'm not going to make friends saying that. But I mean, yeah. it is what it is. People play golf, people don't. People throw lots of water on a piece of grass in the middle of Africa where we're short of water. But, mm. There you go. There, but there's opportunity. Yeah, but you so, see land so is always a lot, opportunity. A lot of people do rock climbing stuff. So there's a lot of hills which we call kopis here. It's Dutch okay. for small head. Okay. It's like a, like a pile of rock. Hmm. Uh, you can see some of them just around here. You look out mm. the window, these hills are called yes. kopis. Okay. So you can go rock climbing, you can go hiking. Uh, there's parasailing, paddock riding, there's mm. hot air ballooning, there's indoor versions of the outdoor sports. Right. Um, there's stuff for kids like go-karting. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of big races that take place here. So in November, we've got the big cycling race mm. uh, where people race around the whole city. Yes, I was here for that. Yeah. Shut so, down roads and everything. Yeah. Okay. So, so that one's a bit alarming, actually. I'll tell you why. Because my kid was due uh, when, when we had our first kid. He was due during that race when it was scheduled. Fortunately, he was late. Okay. But otherwise, we would have had a tough time getting to the hospital. At best, you might have been at home saying, yeah. stop, stop, natural stop. Natural delivery. But really, the, 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 we're and, here. So, wow. yeah, we ended up doing natural delivery anyway, but it was like designated place. Yeah, yes. yeah but still, it was, it was a scary time because yep. we were like, what if the roads are blocked off? Because one of the roads that we had to go on was exactly on the race route. So, yeah. Um, but anyway, and then there, there's quite a lot of foot running races. So my partner at the moment is a, is a Comrades Marathon person. Okay. Uh, she's done nine Comrades. Wow. Um, so, and in fact, she even went to India and ran like from wow. New Delhi to Nepal, not New, Nepal, uh, New Delhi to uh, Mumbai or vice versa. Wow. I can't remember which direction, but it's like one and a half thousand Ks. And I'm like, that's insane. That's insane. That's insane. I couldn't do it. I'm barely um, doing like yeah. eight minutes on a treadmill, I, walking. I, I, I basically die at about five k's. I've managed, I think, nine. <laughs> That's good. You know, You're better than me. But no, it's it's rough. Yes. So so those guys do a lot of races around mm. Joburg. I think there's something every weekend. Okay. Um, and you'll see they'll cordon off the roads. Mm. And the cops will stand there, blocking okay. you and moving you around. Right. So you definitely need a GPS to get around these things. There it is. Um, yeah, there's a lot of sports stuff you can do here, mm. so you won't be short of sports stuff. No. Um, but this is what I'm talking about, what activities you like, and I say, what's your identity? So if you're a sports person, there's plenty of stuff for you. Yes. Uh, if you like animals, there's stuff for you. If you like shopping malls, I've seen you guys raving about the shopping malls yeah. here. Joe Bergman, shopping malls. It's amazing. Like every place I've been to, I'm so disappointed by the shopping malls. I'm like, I understand why. Starting here, Ooh. I understand why. What's, 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 what's wrong with you people? Correct, correct. Right? Where's so, the rest of it? Where's it? <laughs> So, um, so even like, for example, at our Kilani shopping mall, there's a branch of Home Affairs there. So if you, you lose your ID book, because you know South Africans, we carry ID all the time. Okay. Uh, unlike the states where you're like, it's against my amendment rights. Uh, like mm, you don't mm, want to be mm, like tracked mm. by the government because <laughs> they're going to come take your guns. <laughs> right. You did that very well. Right. So we don't have that vibe here. We carry your ID because we're used to the old apartheid government, which would be like 
show me your ID, please. Okay. You know, to tell if you're allowed to be in this area or not, because oh. they're Nazis, right? Okay. So we're used to carrying ID. Okay. Uh, so, so you can get your ID at the shopping mall, wow. right? Right. So it's like yeah. a government department in the shopping mall. In the shopping mall. Yeah. Everything so, you need. Yeah. yeah. We're into convenience here. Yeah. yeah. No, very much so. Y you guys invented the drive-through. Mm -hmm. We invented the. Th the, the shopping mall that has everything. One stop shop. Y'all invented one stop yeah. shop. No matter where you go, whether it's a plaza, whether it's a mall, yeah. one stop shop. And I love that and appreciate yeah. that. And I mean, even to you starting the book, right? Now the book is here, which mm. an insider guide to Johannesburg, phenomenal resource. But even back then, wanting to write it for people to not only know about Johannesburg, but want to visit mm. Johannesburg. So would you say the ideal person that would purchase this book would be somebody who's looking to visit or who has visited? Somebody, somebody who didn't, wasn't aware that Joburg actually has cool stuff. Okay. All right, so, so going back to identity and, and what you're interested in. So if you say from the UK uh, and you're kind of say middle aged, you probably find central Joburg sections like the parks interesting because that's where your British colonial stuff is. Okay. So if you go into those areas, there's houses there that are 120 years old and they were built by some British architects and they look like cathedrals because they're built out of rock. Yes. Not brick, rock. Right. Like right. neatly cut, like a cathedral. Wow. So my high school, I went to like a super privileged high school. It is. It looks like a cathedral. It's still here now. Yeah. Okay. You can go you see it. You have to tell me the name yeah. and I'll, I'll drive by one uh, day. JP Boys. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and there's another one called St. John's. It's closer here. St. John's, yeah. okay. They look like cathedrals because mm. they were designed by a British architect 100 years ago. Okay. Um, so th that's if you're from the UK, you'd love that stuff. Uh, there's a, a, a military history museum. Mm -hmm. And if you go look at that, it's got World War II stuff. So we've got a large number of German hmm. bits of equipment that mm -hmm. were taken when the South Africa supported the British Empire uh, against Hitler because mm. uh, we were um, under the British Empire at that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we've got Messerschmitts, we've got uh, Fokker Wolfs, we've got uh, Schmeisers, we've got all this German stuff that we've collected from there. We've got British tin hats mm. from the World War II. Wow. We've got Boer War uniforms, so the traditional red coats that you think of the British, the red coats are coming. Yeah. Peter Stuyvesant. Uh-huh, uh-huh. We've got all that stuff wow. in that museum. Uh, and in fact, there's a little joke about it that I report in my book where many years ago, about 20 years ago, the government was like on this crackdown against illegal weapons and somebody tipped them off. By the way, this museum's got weapons. Huh. So they raided the place and they're like, you guys have got weapons. Oh, wait, you're a military museum. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild. It is hilarious. That's so, wild. It made it to the newspapers. It's like, these guys raided us because we've got weapons. You like, know? Really? Right. Of course we've got weapons. At the museum. You it's didn't see as you museum. came? Correct. Yeah, so, so that place is cool uh, if you're into, like, uh, that sort of history. Yes. It's not cool, like, what it represents. Right, 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 right. Um, but just to see that history. And, and it's been modernized slightly, so it's got some stuff from Mkonto Wisizwe, which was the ANC's military wing. Mm. Uh, so uh, stuff about that. Uh, you know, one man's freedom fighters is another man's terrorist. So when I was growing up at school, they were like, no, those are terrorists. Mm. And now, of course, we call them the freedom fighters. So, you know, one wonders elsewhere in the world where terrorists yes. might be later called freedom fighters. Mm. So we're careful about what we say here, and this is why South Africa has its political stance. Wow. Um, and a lot of people don't understand this. They, they're very, very myopic about where they're coming from. Mm. So if you're from the States, no, these guys are terrorists and these mm. guys are liberators, mm. right? You want some freedom. Wow. That's it. I love that. that. We don't see it that way. Right. Because we've had that history. Right. You know, Reagan supported the apartheid government, right? No. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Sanctions only hit us in 86, two years after Reagan was president. Okay. Interesting. But even to have the thought that we're mindful of how we say things or mm -hmm. how we, um, I won't say associate people, but say things about people, right? Mm -hmm. Because to your point, one may say a terrorist at this time, but then later they may be yeah. known as freedom fighters. That's a, that's a statement in the thought of itself. Yeah, think about, say, Northern Ireland, right? Mm -hmm. How do they perceive the IRA? Are they freedom fighters or are they terrorists? Hmm. Depends on which side you're on. Depends on which, always depends, depends on which, which side. side you're on. Yeah. And this is why I say... Of history if, as well. If you're thinking about 
coming to see here, you need to think about like, what is your identity? What are you about? What interests you as a person of this type? Yes. Of this identity. Uh, so I try not to commit to any particular stance. I just try to I try to be objective. Mm -hmm. So that's why I give a range of things. Yes. Uh, so I mean, if you if you an African American, for you the key stuff will be Soweto. It will be mm -hmm. the Mandela House. It will be the apartheid museum. Yes. Because that speaks to the Jim Crow laws in the states. Mm -hmm. uh, because they're just fighting the same stuff. Yes. Um, where you're not allowed to sit on that park bench. You're not mm -hmm. allowed to drink out of that water fountain. Uh, you can't go to that school. Mm -hmm. Get to the front of the bus. Mm -hmm. You know. Or get to the back of the bus, depending yeah. on which colour you are. Right. Right? We had the same rubbish. Yeah, yeah, In yeah. fact, ours was worse. You're not allowed on that bus. Right. You're not allowed back or front. Okay. Uh, and you're going to get assaulted if you if you try that. Gotcha. So, um, yeah. So, again, depending on what your identity is, yes. what you're going to be interested in. So, scientific sure. interests, so say a scientist type, then your interest is definitely going to be Stirklantone. Hmm. Uh, Afrikaans word meaning strong fountain. Okay. It's an area in the northwest of Joburg, or the perimeter, uh, closer to a city called Krugersdorp, which Joburg's slowly absorbing. Okay. Uh, Krugersdorp was named after Paul Kruger, who was a, a Boer, i.e. Afrikaans or Dutch, uh, president of an area which was called Transvaal. Hmm. Transvaal was a large area that's now currently Limpopo, northwest uh, Mpumalanga and Gauteng. Hmm. So it broke up into four provinces. Okay, that's very uh, large. So that whole area, it used to be about the size of France, I'd say. Wow. Uh, so he, he controlled that area, uh, and he was the leader of the, the then, uh, what we call trek boers, meaning drag farmers, hmm. people who dragged their, their stuff along by ox wagon, and they were farmers. Uh, but Dutch descendants, basically, mm -hmm. fleeing the British, and, and so he was their president of the South African Republic, mm. which in Dutch is South Afrikaans Republic, and it's spelled with a Z uh, in Dutch. So mm. hence our acronym and internet domain is ZA. Mm. That's why the rand is ZAR. Yes, yes. Because it's okay. South Afrikaans. So. Mm. Yeah. So he was the president, and they named that town after him, Krugersdorp. It means okay. literally Kruger's town. Uh, so it's out there, and it's, it's a cave. It's a cave system with some of our oldest ancestors. Now, I know Americans are very religious, and I know that a lot of Americans are anti-evolution. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, what was the case? Um, I'm trying to remember the name of the case. Mm. There was that whole case where the guy was not allowed to teach it. Oh, I that whole definitely, definitely yeah. don't know the case name, I can't but remember, definitely I can't remember the, the, the lawyer, experience the results. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't mm -hmm. remember the name of the lawyer, but there was the, so, so in the Constitution, you've got church-state separation, so we've yes. got the same thing here. Yeah. Uh, but ours is, our constitution is actually highly progressive. I don't know if you've read it. Okay. Like I have it gives not. rights to homosexuals, it gives rights to all religions okay. explicitly. Okay. So can, there's no discrimination allowed. And uh, in that constitution in the States, you've got that church state separation, which is one of the great things America brought to, to, to the West and to the West's colonies is the church state separation because Europe was church states. Yes. I mean, the, the queen or king, as it is now, mm -hmm. king. Of England is still the head of the church. Yes. Right. Right. So it's still a theocratic state in mm -hmm. effect. Mm -hmm. uh, they call it a constitutional monarchy, but technically he owns all the land, all most of the land, and he still has to rubber stamp the prime minister, and and that's why it's called a prime minister, not a president, because mm -hmm. he's the first minister. He's not the ruler of the country. He's not yes. the boss. Yeah. Yeah. The boss is the king. That's why Australia's got a prime minister. That's why Canada's got a prime minister, right? Because mm -hmm. they answer to the crown technically. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Whereas we do dropped that stuff in '61, so okay. we went from a, a prime minister to a, a starts president. Okay. And um, now uh, our constitution has that same church-state separation. So technically, you're not supposed to have religion in schools unless it's explicitly a religious school. Okay. And if you do have religion in school, you're supposed to have all. Yes. Like if you teach Christianity, you must teach Buddhism, you must yes. teach Jainism, you must teach yes. Hinduism. Yes. All this stuff, right? And if a Muslim kid comes to school with their scarf on their head, you can't tell them to take it off because mm. that's their right. Yes. Uh, so, um, so that's our attitude, which is like just tolerate everyone. And what's interesting is that previously we didn't have that tolerance. Like there was enforcement. Like, in fact, there was a policy, and you can find this on academia.edu where I've got my research articles. Mm. Uh, and one of them was uh, a thing called debilate, which is Afrikaans for the policy. Okay. And the Debelate document said that the, 
the, the Dutch descendants had mandate over the land mm. and mandates over the junior partner who mm. must be under their care and brought to Christianity. Mm. Mm. Brought to Christianity. Mm. Uh, so, so that was the attitude. And that attitude permeates quite a lot of our, our schooling here still. Mm. Uh, so when we see the states, we see the same thing. Yeah. This whole fight that the states have, especially in the early 2000s, it was a big issue uh, about the whole evolution versus creation. Like okay. You teach creation in school. Right. Uh, and you had that whole um, intelligent design mm. dispute. Mm. Um, so we have similar issues here because South Africans are very religious. Okay. Uh, I think our percentages are very similar to the states. Wow. Very similar percentages. Um, we've probably got more variety. So more weird little side versions of okay. Christianity. So okay. it's not just like Baptists, Pentecostals, yes. you know, Lutherans and Anglicans and Catholics. It's not just that. Yes. There's like lots of funny little ones. Okay. okay. Uh, and there's some semi-tribal ones as well. Okay. Okay. So, uh, and then there's, um, you know, obviously the Middle Eastern and Far Eastern type stuff as well. Right. So, so we, we've got a much wider range, I think, in large numbers. And... If you look at uh, the, the whole evolution thing, uh, you'll find that the best place to go look is, is Stokefontein, because that's where we found most of our fossils. Mm. And some of them are like 2.6 million years old. Mm. Uh, Still on display now. Yeah. Okay. And so. it's where they dug it up. It's where they found the stuff. Okay. And the whole story started as a mining operation, because they wanted quicklime for the mines, so they'd blow up stalactites and stalagmites and crush it. Mm. And um, in the process, they released these bones, and then they took them to Fitz University, which is where, which specializes in, in paleo mm. uh, anthropology. And the guys there were like, "No, this is a human ancestor. This is not just like an animal." Mm. Uh, and that created a lot of excitement. So actually, mm. of the oldest skeletons of, of human ancestors, the oldest are South Africa Stokefontein wow. and Kobe Fora in Ethiopia. Wow. So those right. are two really old spots okay. where you get like two to three million year old finds. Wow. I knew uh, of the one in Ethiopia. I did not know mm -hmm. one was here yeah, as well. Yeah. So in fact, they call that area Cradle of Humankind. That's where that is. Yeah. That's what I was going to ask yeah. you because yeah. my wife wants to go yeah. to the Cradle of Humankind. Yeah. So but that's yeah. okay. So for your, for your viewers who, yes, who are deeply religious or who may be deeply religious mm -hmm. or even charismatic church attending, say, um, what I want to say is respectfully, um, you need to reevaluate what the theory of evolution means and, mm. um, and try and understand the word theory a bit better. Mm. It doesn't mean guess, mm. it means model, scientific mm. model. Mm. And it's not actually incompatible with religion. And in fact, one of my publications uh, as, a, as a philosopher was on this topic, mm. showing that it is compatible. Mm. It is actually compatible mm. because you've got to think in terms of how does change occur and if you want to say well god did it cool mm. you can say that okay you can say it was guided because it's too much of a coincidence you can mm. say that mm. and then you can keep what you want to have faith in you don't have to throw the baby out of the bathwater mm -hmm. so when you see that stuff um it doesn't need to be this sort of threat to your faith right and in fact, I always say to people who are religious, if your faith is that weak, that a bit of science can break it, mm. you don't really have faith, do you? Mm. Right, right, right. Yeah? Right. So, go have a look. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what it really shows is that we're all African in the end. Mm. And it also shows that actually the Joburg area has been populated for like two point something million years. Wow. So... It's actually a really old area. Wow. And some of those people might, their ancestors might still be here. Still be here. Yeah. That's a beautiful thing. Now, that's fun. That's fun. That's definitely a place that I will take my wife to and we will get to see. Yeah. It'll be, yeah, it'll be in February when we get to experience yeah. it and see so, it. So, so there's a museum at Advitz called the Origins Museum. Okay. And they've got a, another museum that's quite difficult to get into. That's private for the professors, and you can maybe persuade them to let you see that. That's the actual finds. So quite a lot of the time they'll have casts on display because the finds are so rare and so valuable Correct. that the risk of somebody like stealing them is very high. Yes. 
so they don't always put that stuff on display and if they do it'll be for a talk and then they'll quickly scoot it back into the safe yes yes um, so to get into the safe to see stuff you you, you have to get special permission so okay. most of the stuff on display is costs wow. um, but you can get I've seen the stuff I've seen the real stuff because I worked for them at some stage nice yeah, um, yeah. so I was able to get access to that stuff and it's, it it's so awe-inspiring to stand before something Wow. that is a thousand times older than written civilization mm that you, you just can't comprehend that number. Right. It's, it's mind-blowing. And you look nice. at this thing and you can see this as a human. You can see it's a human. Yeah, yeah. But it's not bone, it's rock. Mm. And, and you can see it's like aggregate rock and it's got these fine crystal patinas on the outside. So it's not, you can see this is not a forgery. This is a real mm. thing. Mm. It's an amazing thing to see. Mm. Uh, but yeah, that's the scientific interest. There it is. Um, what else? Shopping? Shopping I've mentioned. Right. You talked about shopping and it's in the book as well. Yeah. I mean, uh, we can't uh, talk about shopping enough because, I mean, it's an abundance here. Yeah. I gather from your videos that you guys love food. So, so really what I want to recommend is actually try the sit-down restaurants. They, they yes. generally are better. Yes. Uh, Mandela Square, I assume you've been to that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So those are some of the best restaurants there. Okay. Um, Which we've been to a majority of them, oddly enough, but maybe not. We haven't gone to the Hard Rock because right. we were like, it's like it's in American the States. Dish, right. Yeah. So we've gone to the other ones. But, but I think know. it's sometimes nice to see the local spin on something. So I could see that yeah. being the case. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, when, when I was in the States, I could see differences, subtle differences. At the Hard Rock. No, at, okay. say, McDonald's. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's definitely um, totally different. Well, I won't say totally different. There yeah, there, there, were some, there were some differences. To your yeah. point, yeah. Um, so, but, uh, yeah, at, at Santon Square, Mandela Square, they call it now. Yes. Uh, I would say probably Papa's, the Greek restaurant. Mm -hmm. That's a good restaurant. Yeah. I've eaten there. Been yeah, there. so, so there's, there's one that I'd rate higher than that, and it's one called, um, what's it called? Uh, Schwamico, it's in Norwood. Oh, it's about 10 k's to the south if you go down Ravonia Road to Norwood suburb. Okay. Uh, outstanding. Huge portions. Greek and food. Outstanding My food. wife loves like Greek outstanding. food. Outstanding. They've got Top of Joburg many years in a row. Okay. Yeah. Now we'll have to check it out. Yeah. We'll have to check it out, do a video and yeah. make sure we shout out. So look, so look at the restaurant John. section. So the recommendations that I've given there are all the rec restaurants I've personally been to. Nice. Recommend. Okay. Um, Which says a lot. What's nice about Joburg is because we've got such a variety, because we've got this whole constitutional tolerance thing, because we've got this no bigotry thing, um, Joburg's got catering for all kinds of people. Very true. So you'll find, for example, if you're a Muslim, mm -hmm. uh, restaurants in, in Rosebank area, it's all halal. Yes. If you are, ah. a, if you're vegan, you'll find that almost every restaurant will cater to you. Almost every restaurant. That is true. There's a section. Yeah, and in fact, there's some restaurants that are only vegan. Yes. Even uh, in the Benmore. Yeah. There's a vegan yeah. store, restaurant. So, so. Never mind vegetarians, so like full-on vegan, like yes. there's no animal products in there. Yes, yeah. So, um, so we, we cater for all these, these different identities, and mm -hmm. I think that's what's really great about Joburg. And so great, people, in the things that we did share and say, know that you can find it all in the book, An Insider's Guide to Johannesburg. And to finish the talk, let's talk about nightlife, right? Because it's a part of what takes place here in Johannesburg. What are some of your recommendations as it pertains to nightlife here? Uh, yeah, so um, I'm, uh, let's just say, getting on in years. Okay, okay. So um, I, ha I haven't been to nightclubs for quite a while. Yes. Um, and they tend to come and go quite quickly. Really? Um, yeah, th there's a few stalwarts that sort of last for quite a long time. Okay. But some of them, you know, flash in the pan. Yeah. So generally you, you're going to Google this stuff. Okay. Uh, and see what's near you. Okay. Um, but there, there, there are a lot. There are a lot. There's mm. like at least one in every suburb, I'd say. Okay. Um, and then there's also a lot of shows that go on. Uh, they tend to be announced on billboards. So when you drive around the city, yes, you'll see. I have I'm sure seen you've seen those. those eh? Yes, on the on the light poles. Yeah. Yeah. So some of it's like um, tends to be very American content. So like redone Broadway musicals. Yes. Uh, like I think we did Mamma Mia recently. Mm -hmm. Michael uh, Jackson even had yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and, and it'll be some, you know, Elvis impersonator doing their okay. thing. Yep. And they're, they're usually quite good. Um, I prefer personally to go to something original that's African. Nice. Like that's specifically ours. Yes. Because uh, the American stuff, I'd rather just see the original. Yes. 
Uh, I happen I, to agree. Yeah, and I've got quite a lot of, the, like the Broadway musicals, I've got quite a lot of those, mm -hmm. like uh, on DVD, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not really my thing. My thing's more, so I'm more of a club guy, okay. or I was when I was younger. Yes. Um, but they, they really come and go a lot. Mm. Um, there is one big one, I don't want to name it because I don't want to give them too much business okay, like, okay. without them bribing me. Yep, yep, yep. Um, but there is a big one in, in Midrand, which is kind of 20Ks that way. Okay. 20 clicks. There it is. Uh, and um, they, uh, they mostly do sort of dance type music. Mm. And the audience is quite mixed as well, so it's okay. not like... So you'll find that that music genres, and, and I mentioned this in my book, and, and you know, South Africans were pretty direct on what we talk about, so I'm yes. going to be direct about this. Okay. Music genres tend to be racialized. Ah. Um, so you'll find that people who like uh, Kum and Kwaito and um, uh, the latest one, I'm a Piano, yes. uh, generally would not come from a formerly colonial background and ancestry, yes, yes, if you yes. see what I'm saying. I see what you're saying. You, you uh, did, you did that well. Of, uh, whereas, and vice versa, the people yeah. that are of that kind of ancestry yeah. would tend to be the Swifties or the rock and roll people. Or okay. The, yeah. Okay. So it's kind of, it is kind of a split like that. Yes. So you'll, you'll find that if you, if you turn on a radio station, it will mostly be like American pop mm. and the audience would kind of be the people that would like American yes. pop. Yes, yes. And then you'll switch to another station and it'll be like R&B and mm -hmm. quite hip hop so, and, and, hip -hop and all, all this mm -hmm. kind of stuff. And then you know what the target audience correct, is there. Correct. And nightclubs are kind of like that as well. Yes. But there are some crossovers. So house seems to be the middle okay. meeting ground. Yeah. House music seems yep. to be a meeting ground. Mm -hmm. So if you go to clubs that play house music, it tends to be a mixed crowd. Yes. Uh, whereas it tends to lean one way or the other, the other types of, of, of venues. That's, that's my observation. Mm -hmm. um, as I say, I haven't been to a club. Oof. I don't know, probably 10 years. There it is. Like quite a long time. There it is. So, There's always an expiration date as it pertains to yeah, so, the so nightlife. I've, so I've listed them, but I haven't been to one for ages. There it is. Um, and then, uh, yeah, then other, so, so we've got shows, we've got clubs, we've got um, some funny night type things. So for example, in November, they light up the zoo with fluorescent glasses, stuff that. like that, yeah. I did, I saw the advertisement, not yeah. it in actual person. So when I was a kid, I really loved that. Okay. Yeah, it's very nice for kids. So you're running around like in the dark with these animals that are like glow in the dark. And, uh -huh. Yeah, Okay. So it's kind of fun. Mm. Um, but yeah, there's, there's sort of, uh, I'm trying to think what else there is that's, uh, Obviously, there's restaurants, but we've already discussed those. Yeah. Um, plays, so you get small plays and, and big Broadway type performances. So, Santon, uh, you've got the Mandela Square. Yes. There's a theater on the there's square. There's a theater there, yeah. Yeah. So, they tend to put on, on the latest shows. Mm. There's also, also Victory Theater in Norwood, near okay. that restaurant I mentioned. Okay. They tend to put on African dance numbers. Okay. So, oh. so, so the one in, in the CBD, um, it's Civic Theater. Okay. Civic Theater? No, yeah, there's two actually. The Civic Theater, which is Bromfontein, just outside the CBD. Uh, and then there's, um, I hate this. Why is my brain not working today? <laughs> It's okay. Anyway, there's, a, yep. there's another theater in the CBD. Yes. Um, it's so annoying. Mm. It'll come to you soon yeah. as you leave. So, so that tends to be the show. They tend to put on the apartheid-related shows oh. at that theater. Okay. Civic, they tend to put on also um, derivative works. So um, either American-based or locally-based, but quite big things okay the, the one in the cbd itself is more intimate it's like quite small seating mm. um so that'll be like a john carney kind of thing where okay. you're looking at like this is how we suffered under apartheid type play okay and those can be quite um enlightening oh but also emotionally like that's what i was thinking jeez it's, that's what i was thinking because you, you you relive yeah the trauma you've you've been through if, okay. you, if you were there okay um so yeah, so those, I, I would tend to go to those rather than the American rehashed stuff. Yes. Although some of the American rehashed stuff I've seen has been quite good. So I, I recently saw a redone, when I say recently, I mean like in the last few years, mm. saw a redone of the um, Phantom of the Opera. Okay. That wasn't bad. 
Okay. They managed to do it pretty well. Okay. That was at Monte Casino's uh, theatre. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the nightlife. Uh, there's obviously casinos as well. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got two or three big casinos. The closest, I would say, is Monte Casino. Yes. And I love that place, not because of the casino. I mean, I love Monte Casino as well. It's fabulous, eh? Very much so. It's, it's a, a whole experience. It's like a Disney-esque thing. Like Correct. I mean, you have restaurants, you have games, you have movies. Some, you have little, some little boutique stores. Correct. You yeah. have that as well. Yeah. But what I like the most is the fake decor. Yes. I just love the fake decor. Yes. It is so overtly fake, but, but it's well there. done. I was about to say, but it, it's intentional at the same yeah. time. It reminds me of, um, I don't think it's Caesar's Palace, but it's a hotel in exactly. Vegas. Have you been and to Caesar's Palace yet? Yes. Here? No. There's, There's one, a Caesar's yeah, Palace here. At the airport, and it's exactly the same thing. It's this huh. fake Roman stuff. Yeah. Right, so Monte Casino, for those who don't know, is, is fake Tuscan village. Yes. So it's like these little old Italian mm -hmm. houses. Mm -hmm. With cars and yeah. little the cars, scooters. The car's real. The car's real. Okay, no, okay. It's real. Okay. It's just been parked there. Yes. Um, but, yeah, and the fake washing lines and the fake mm -hmm. pigeons. Mm -hmm. it's, oh, yeah. I laugh every yep. time. Yep, and top of Nomad, actually. Yeah. Yeah, it was going right to house like And what's quite man. cool is the way the sunset works in there. So that it's night mm -hmm. over the casino. Yes. And then as you walk away from the casino, it's sort of you get sunrise oh, or sunset in different directions. That's fun. Yeah, it's quite fun. I've noticed the differences, but never paid attention to how it transitions. I would say if you're from Colorado, probably Casa Bonita might be similar. Okay. That kind of vibe. Okay. I love it. Gotcha. Love that place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so kitsch. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. So, so there is a similar one at the airport. That's, that's the Caesars. Okay. Yeah. Huh. Very similar. Well, there it is. There it is. So, there those, so those are kind of your options. Yeah. Um, but there's always something going on. Like always. Every, every weekend. Oh, and in fact, uh, even like during the day on weekends, we have flea markets. Yes. Uh, what do you call, do you call them? Yeah, in the we call States? flea markets. Yeah, okay, it's yeah. quite the same. So the best one there, in my opinion, is the... Um, the one it's it's called Four Ways. Yes, Four Ways Market. It used market. to be in Four Ways, but it's not in Four Ways anymore. Okay. So Four Ways is up north, and yes. it's been relocated since to an area called Modderfontein, mm -hmm. um, which is Dutch for mud fountain. Huh. Yeah, it's in fact it, it's, they used to produce uh, mining explosives there. Really. Mm, for the mines. Okay. Uh, but it's now just a suburb, and um, I think they might still have a factory there, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. Anyway, th that's where it is. Yes. And so there's a nature reserve there where you can see like fish eagles and yep. a few other small things, like some small buck. Okay. Um, but the flea market there is very nice. It is. You've I've been. been. There, hey? We've been. I think you did. Mm -hmm. did yeah, we've been. A there, friend huh? of mine that moved here from the States, he loves that area. Yeah. And he goes uh, predominantly on, I think it's Sunday, yeah. is when he likes to go. Yeah. But nonetheless, in it all, it is a nice market. I mean, yeah. there's various vendors and different food that you can yeah. try out there as well. And so, yeah, yeah. No, we've definitely been there. Yeah, There are others. So I think there's there's another big one in Boxburg, which is a city mm. on the, um, what we call the East Rand. Yes. Uh, it's near the airport. Okay. Uh, and that flea market's mostly Chinese stuff, but mm. low cost items, like gimmicky yes. items. Okay. So that's, if you want that kind of stuff, like just novelty items, it's that's the there. place to go. Okay. But if you want like authentic stuff, either the Rosebank one, uh, mm -hmm. would, uh, you know, I've seen you enthusiasm about yep. Rosebank. Rosebank's a great place I as well. I love Rosebank. Yeah, I've, I've noticed people from overseas like Rosebank a lot. Mm -hmm. It's um, a one-stop shop. It very much and is. And the child train is right there. Yeah, I, personally, yeah, I have a slight preference for Santon City from a one-stop shop perspective. Okay. But Rosebank's not bad. Okay. Um, but, yeah, so there's the flea market there, which has a lot of African stuff, like uh, authentic African artwork and mm. so on. Um, but I would always encourage people to go more towards the source, which is um, uh, Velikazi Street in Soweto, because there's that kind okay. of stuff there yes, as well. Yes, yes, yes. Plus there's Sakumzi Restaurant, which is if you want real South African food, like yes. the real McCoy, that's where you're getting it. Okay. Uh, that's where you're going to get Papi. That's in Soweto? Yeah, that's where you're going to get Papi okay. stew and okay. Sumerho and tripe and all that kind of stuff. Like yes. actual South African food is there. It's there. Um, but again, food is divided by the apartheid system. We, 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 this is just how we are. Mm. So if you go to, for example, a, a barbecue, which we call a bride, yes. uh, with predominantly white people, you'll find that they'll serve certain things. And if you go with predominantly African people, you're going to find they're going to serve certain things. Mm -hmm. uh, and so on the, on the food front, you'll find that certain dishes are cultural. So mm. Morocco is like an African thing. 
and then you've got Cook Sisters and Melkdert, which is an Afrikaans thing. Okay. And then you've got the English will do like British stuff, like roast beef or whatever. But yeah, it's, yeah. It's like a bit of a cliche. Mm. Uh, but but I mean, it's like that in the States too. Yeah, sure. You know, go to various barbecues sure. and you can expect to have different experiences, different food, can you, cook different ways. Give, give me an example. I'm interested and in so, this. And so, okay. Oh, so, so like, this is I, fun. I, I like food. So like barbecue, yeah. we'll, we'll keep it on the barbecue side yeah. of things, as you all will call it, Bri. So for us, so we don't have the, as many different groups, right? We'll just say white and blacks for the sake of the conversation. Right. And so you go to a black uh, barbecue cookout. You can expect to have baked beans with like pork. Okay. Bacon in it, and you can expect to have macaroni and cheese. Okay. Well, we would have collard greens, which is like a leafy green, sort of like a kale, uh -huh. um, but a little bit more tender, if you will. And so you'll have you expect to have that potato salad will be there. That's yeah. the sides. Meat wise, you can expect to have like barbecued chicken, yeah. ribs, yeah. and um, those are like your go to barbecue type items. Right. Yeah. But then if you were to go to like which I have white friends and all. But nonetheless, you go to their barbecue. Yeah. Huh. What can you expect to have? Hot dogs, really? hamburgers, um, chips and um, That's so odd. and let me think of a side. What's a popular side like egg salad? You okay. know, something a little different. They yeah. might have macaroni and cheese as well, mac but it's going to be cooked different. It's going to be a boiled mac and cheese as opposed to like a baked mac and cheese, okay. which is what we do. But we're heavy on the mac and cheese in the South. And even like... What about a, Cajun? Like? Cajun? Oh, man, that's a whole nother like people group. That's a people group and yeah, a, yeah, just sure. a food in itself. Like, man, what spicy would they have stuff, there? Right? Very spicy. Uh, depending on how Cajun you're talking, you can expect to have like crawfish. Is this, really, the, this is the, like the indigenous Native American cuisine, or is it like a Creole cuisine? Creole is it type Creole? cuisine, okay. correct. And so you'll have that. You'll have like boudin, which is a whole other type of So this is food. Your, French perch, your French purchase, your Louisiana purchase Correct, area, right? correct. So swamp food, basically. Exactly, exactly. The book cooked to perfection. Right. You wouldn't even have known that it came out of the swamp <laughs> until they told you. Then you're mad that you ate it. Gator steak. Correct. Okay. No. Really? Gator as well. Serious? Frog legs, wow. all of that. Frog I mean, legs doesn't surprise if me. If it's, it's in the swamp, it's, it's going to be eaten. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, but it, it you can expect that once you go or if you know but who's is putting the on the barbecue. And pepper, right? It's like very spicy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like that reddish, reddish oh, black. Oh, absolutely. Spice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Heavy on it. Heavy on the spice, Corn heavy on the, the pepper. Corn on the cob, yeah, you can have it there. Is, it, is that mean, not specific? It's yeah, it's in the back. General, yeah. It's in the background. Have you seen our corn here? The white one. Yes, we happened to buy some street corn the other day, and that's the real It wasn't thing, good. Man. No, you're it wrong. wasn't done. You're just wrong. It wasn't done. It's meant to be chewy and crunchy. It was chalky. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah, that is a bit underdone. Yeah, it wasn't done because I've grown corn, yeah. so I definitely know when corn is, you know, yeah, ready. Yeah, it's a bit underdone. It's a harvest, mm -hmm. correct? Correct. It wasn't a. Yeah, so that's one of those things that is sort of split here. So like, if mm. you go one way, it's going to be boiled and if okay. you go the other way it'll be barbecued okay yeah gotcha i'm and, with you yeah i'm picking up what you're putting down yeah as we would and say it's, and it's, it's meat it's meat's kind of the same everyone would cook the same stuff kind of mostly, okay except you'll probably find some tripe this side and probably none that side i'm with you uh you'll definitely find like spinach based stuff this side and not that side okay. you'll find potato salad that side and not that side okay yeah I, i've got a cute anecdote about this mm. Uh, our audience must just excuse me for telling this story as it happened. We're here. Uh, went to some friend's party, we're talking like 1994-ish, so around the time that the politics were changing, and went to these friend's house, and we were in the minority. Okay. Right? Okay. And as we arrive, the food's already started to be cooked, and they're like, White people foods in the kitchen. We go into the kitchen. You know what's in the kitchen? Salads. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> this salad was Just available. Salad. <laughs> That's it. That's all. We're like, really? Right. I want to eat what's on the bra. Meat. Right. Right. Like every kind of meat you can think Correct. of. Correct. I want that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and what, is, what is quite interesting as well is 
so we used to the kind of paper plates and you put a bit of soda and yes. you put like a piece of meat or whatever they're like no there's the bowl and they'd like just chuck it in the bowl and you'd like reach into the bowl and take what you want oh. so it was a slightly different way of, of running it yes um, but it was a funny experience to be, yeah, yeah, yeah. to be ripped like that there it is there it yeah. is you never know what to expect but at the yeah. end of the day we all have to eat. How about that? Exactly. But no, I appreciate yeah. you, uh, John, coming on today and sharing not only your experiences yeah. um, with life here in South Africa, but as well your intellect that is even shown in the book that was put together, An Insider's Guide to Johannesburg. And so Thanks, hopefully man. you all get the opportunity to pick it up and to allow for it to not only inform you of what you're coming into, whether you're visiting or moving, but as well excite you about all the opportunities that are actually here in Johannesburg specifically, right? Yeah. Not even talking the broad South Africa, but the specific of Johannesburg. And so yeah. are there any last words that you would like to share? Yeah, I, I, like to, I like to say to people that coming to South Africa, not coming to Joburg, is like going to the States and not going to New York like there's there's the real South Africa and there's the Disney South Africa nice. Disney South Africa is like cute animals and a cute mountain mm. the real South Africa is here mm -hmm. this is where you're going to see graffiti it's where you're going to see brides it's where you're going to see um, apartheid it's where you're going to see the first humans on earth yeah the real things here yeah that's wow. a much bigger mixing part of people here mm. uh, where the default Place that people come to from the rest of Africa, so you yeah. get all kinds here. Yeah. yeah. Um, like, so my favorite cuisine is Ethiopian. Mm. And that we, we can get it here because mm -hmm. we've got Ethiopians here. Yeah. So, so that's that's me. That's what I. That's what I like. I love Joburg. It's wow. a great city. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm not surprised that you all would enjoy it. Mm -hmm. It's more cosmopolitan. It's got speaks to, I think, Africanness. Yes. Yeah. Okay. There it is. There it is, great people. And if you want to be able to enjoy such cuisine as Ethiopian types and so many others, Johannesburg is definitely a place where that affords you the opportunity. Yeah. So Chinese, Greek, Portuguese, oh, here. Mexican, you name it. You're right. You're right. I'm even thinking of restaurants as you say, those different things yeah. that we've even been to. So you're so true and correct as well. So with that being said, these things being shared, great people. We hope you have a fab tabulous day. If you have anything that you would like to add to the conversation, definitely let us know in the comment section below. However, as well, a link to be able to purchase the book that we spoke on today will be in the description below. So find it, get it, and share it with a friend so they can be informed as to all that's here in Johannesburg, South Africa. And until next time, peace!